All right, a lot to get to and not much time. So uh, let's see, where do we start? Let's begin with Hoda Kotb has nothing but nice things to say about Kelly Rowland. After the former Destiny's Child singer reportedly walked off the Today Show. You. Due to an unfavorable dressing room. You don't hear about these dressing room tantrums that much these no. days. Uh, Copy said on uh, Tuesday's episode of the show, I just want to say this. I have great love and admiration for Kelly Rowland. I adore her and I want her to come back on her show and I want her to host again. <laughs> Apparently there were yellow M&Ms in the bowl. Personal oh, now she oh, specifically they. said mm. you take them out. Uh, this comes after she appeared on Sherry on Monday and praised Sherry Shepard for creating and quote, a safe space. Sherry knows how to do things. A clip of the exchange was shared to the show's official Instagram page and one fan commented, I guess her dressing room is acceptable. So She calls Hoda the C-word. There's some kind of drama there. Uh, Sylvester Stallone is advising other actors against doing their own stunts. Uh, he revealed on a new season of his reality show, The Family Stallone... <laughs> That he, alone, alone. He had to. Yeah. He had to have seven major surgeries after uh, Steve Austin body slammed him while filming The Expendables in 2010. Seven major surgeries. That's five surgeries. He <laughs> said, "I did stupid stuff. I was directing Expendables, and like an idiot, I'm doing take ten, take whatever. And I remember one slam." And actually, I could feel it bang. He said, uh, Steve, <laughs> Steve knew, and I never recovered from Expendable okay. Ones. He said, after that film, I was never physically the same. And I've warned people, don't do your own stunts. Casey, how many, just alone, how many fingers am I holding up? Uh, three. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, sorry. Ding, ding. <laughs> um, he had, he always did his own stunts and got screwed up, specifically in Rocky Four. He got punched so hard by Dolph Lundgren that his heart shifted in yeah, his chest. That's Ooh. right. He was in a bad way. Yeah. Uh, Stallone ended up needing a metal plate in his neck, spinal fusions, and treatment for dislocated shoulders after that body. Oh, slam. man. It's, it's a sump pump. Wow. Beyonce has made history again. On uh, Tuesday, Billboard revealed that the musician became the first ever black female artist to top the hot Country, country songs chart <laughs> thanks to her single Texas Hold'em which had debuted at number two mm. on the Hot 100 chart so here's a little clip of that I give her and I'll tell you why I give her credit that's a real country song that's not a hybrid well, pop song no I'm sure they had a real country writer write yeah, this country yeah, yeah, song yeah. for her I, I don't know who got the singing who got the writing credits but yeah um, so I was in one of my workout classes and it came on and I was like, you know, yeah. I was like, Bob, you line it. dancing. I got into the car, came on again. I was like, what is this song? It's everywhere. I'm like, I love this. Yeah, and it's... then it was Beyonce's <laughs> Beyonce. country. And I'm not like, I don't mind country. I will listen to it. I get sick of it quickly. I can't listen to it for too long. Right. But I was like, this is the country I could get around. I, I tend to, for the country that I, I tend to go back to the more, the older style stuff that I think is like, you know, the, and the, whatever you like, that's fine. Whatever make, makes you happy is cool. But the fact that she she leaned into an, a real, yeah. authentic, original country yeah. sound is pretty cool. Yeah, and it's uh, trending on, on Instagram and stuff now. It's it's uh, the the music that I, I see a lot of people dancing to, a lot of women dancing to it on, oh, on, on reels. Made for social media, right? Oh, yeah. Perfectly. Oh, yeah. Totally. Uh, Beyonce and Taylor Swift, by the way, are the only solo female artists who have debuted at number one on the chart with uh, the latter claiming the top spot with Love Story and All Too Well. Well, what about Kathy with Turn Up Go On Forever? 2021. <laughs> that was a uh, Texas Hold'em, which was officially serviced to country radio February 13th, took the top spot from Zach Bryan and Casey Musgraves, whose duet I Remember Everything has sat at number one for 20 weeks. Wow. Anybody so know it, if they're playing it down the hall? Unseated them. I got to believe they are because it's doing really, really well. It's big, yeah. Uh, at the at uh, country radio, had a nice well. uh, launch of the Super Bowl, right? Yeah, that was yep. the one that we were talking about. Exactly. So uh, the 32-time Grammy winner also made history <laughs> as the first female artist to claim the top spot on Hot Country Songs and Hot R and B Hip Hop Songs <laughs> uh, since October 1958. Uh, when the list became all-encompassing genre song charts per Billboard, you know what, it's I, one of those things that's just it. It, it is. It, it's pretty cool. I, I give her credit though. Yeah. She's tapping into a whole group of people that sure you know, and she's yeah. just going to become more famous and more rich. Thirty-two more, Grammys. More money. Yep. I mean, between all of us. 11 Grammys, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All and said and most. done. So, yeah, and that's all of us. Yeah, the Crazy. taco, uh, uh, um, your song case. Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. But it just goes to show you how disingenuous that whole genre of music is. <laughs>
<laughs> you just wanted to say that. Yeah. <laughs> Why, why is that? He got pure satisfaction out <laughs> of saying, saying that. that. <laughs> I don't know. Discussion for another time. I got some more celeb stuff to get to and not a whole lot. So uh, Zachary Ty Bryan oh, Jesus. was arrested again. This is a guy from Home Improvement. Oh, uh, suspected DUI in La Quinta, California. Uh, the 42-year-old Home Improvement actor was booked into the uh, Jean Benoit Detention Center early Saturday morning on charges of felony DUI with at least three priors and misdemeanors contempt of court. So when he shows up now, is it like Norm going into Cheers? <laughs> it must be, yeah, man. Yeah. Uh, besides the uh, the other cases that he's had of uh, potential domestic violence and yeah. all that stuff, he, his past DUI arrest, 2004, 2007, 2017 as well. That's just DUI. Oh, and he's he's one of those domestic violence charges. He was convicted. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I've, I've got the full list yeah. of all the crap that he did here, and this is just a very troubled individual, so he got busted again. Wow. Um, composer Ben Lanzarone whose work was featured in television shows such as Happy Days, The Love Boat, and Dynasty. Died of lung cancer in Los Angeles. Uh, he was 85 years old. And this dude wrote music for all kinds of shows. He wrote for The Tracy Ullman Show, The Jay Leno Comedy Hour, Mr. Belvedere, Dynasty, The Love Boat, Vegas, Matt Houston, The Colbys, and Hotel, in addition to writing uh, music for numerous episodes of Happy Days, Laverne and Shirley, and Mork and Mindy. Amazing, yeah. prolific career. And the first picture I saw of him was a profile shot, and the dude has a, or had a Muppet nose. And I was like, and yeah. I, like I feel so Muppet shallow nose. that this is the first thing I'm noticing about this guy. But, I mean... The guy just the 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 length and breadth of his career is oh, amazing. He was the arranger for the soundtrack of uh, the movie Grease. Yeah, as well. So that's huge. Well, um, I ask all big nose. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> while maintaining his career as a studio pianist, uh, Lanzarone arranged and composed several jingles, which appeared on well over a thousand commercials, records, and soundtracks. I don't have a list of what jingles he did. I'm sure there's probably some that we know there. And he also he did one for this uh, epoxy that can seal up a screen, Preston. He was he was also the musical director uh, and pianist and toured with artists such as uh, Frank Sinatra, Art Gar Garfunkel, Petula Clark, and others. He was, he was the drummer for Led Zeppelin. Uh, no, he was not. Oh. That was John Bonham. I'm sorry. Uh, he was the musical director of the Broadway original production of Grease as well. So this guy just, um, he was a, he was a wealth of, of musical uh uh, Talk creation. About, about with that, all the rights to that music, I wonder what his actual wealth, wealth was yeah, at the time question. of death. Yeah. All right, another death and an actor you probably whose name you probably don't know, uh, Tony Genio. Is that how you say his name? Or Ganius? I actually saw this. IOS. Yeah. Uh, Steve, he played Meat in Porky's. Mm -hmm. Remember the character Dude, me? Dude, yeah. Don't, yeah. Wait, 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 has he passed? Yeah, he died. Are you goddamn kidding? Yeah, so... Uh, That's one of the guys on the list of people, you know, those kind of characters that we love to get on the show. I like to talk to. Uh, he made his film debut in 1979, the coming-of-age uh, comedy drama The Wanderers. Oh, and he's he had a like a, a real scumbag father. Yeah. yeah. He died Sunday following the surgery at a hospital in New York. He was only oh, 64 years man. old. He fell ill last week. He was hospitalized Saturday with a spinal cord infection Ooh. and then passed away Sunday of heart failure. Uh, he became, for much of the 80s, kind of a go-to actor for directors that wanted a little East Coast flavor. Uh, his other uh, credits include Continental Divide with John Belushi, episodes of the 80s series Scarecrow and Mrs. King, and The Equalizer. And for being a, a big dude, he had uh, he had reign. I mean, not that one is exclusive of the other, but he's usually, instead of just always being cast as this meathead without any depth, he could do that. He was also in a memorable scene, and I didn't know this was him, uh -huh. in 1990 in Die Hard 2. He's the guy that John McClane stabs in the eye with the icicle. So Aww. why this has a special importance to me is my that was like the third date with my wife. She comes over to my apartment. She had not betrayed to me that she was incredibly squeamish. We're sitting there watching that <laughs> scene, and her head nearly blew off her shoulders. Yeah. I had uh, read a little bit about him yesterday that he got his first break. He was like apparently working out, like he was big, like a bodybuilder yeah, yeah, type yeah, yeah. of guy. And yeah. uh, and his dad was like, "Do go to this audition uh, for a movie called Petty or something." I can't remember. Manny that. Petty. Yeah, I don't think it was that, <laughs> but yeah. He, so his dad made him stop working out, and go do the, go to this uh, this act, and the rest ball. is history. Uh -huh. Yeah, really. Mm -hmm. Okay, hang on, I'm writing that down. Manny Petty. 
<laughs> That's got to be a movie. Okay. Uh, moving on. Uh, so, yeah, uh, the sad news that he had passed. It sucks. Um, and then a couple other quick things, and then we got to get to clips. we got a lot of stuff happening today. How about this? Um, Deadline report. Sydney Sweeney is set to make her Saturday Night Live hosting debut on March 2nd. Did you see Sydney Sweeney at the BAFTA Awards? Uh -uh. No. This plunging g gown. I mean, everyone... <laughs> There's no way you could be in proximity to that and not be needing nitroglycerin pills. Uh, musical guests will be Casey Musgraves, and the following week, uh, Josh Brolin will host for the third time alongside Ariana Grande as the musical guest. Uh, Variety reports, listen to this. Vanessa Williams is set to star as fictional runway editor Miranda Priestley in the musical adaptation of The Devil Wears Prada. Huh. I can see that. <laughs> Uh, the Ugly Betty actor told the outlet in a statement, bringing Miranda Priestly to life in the West End is an absolute dr dream come true. Uh, grid your loins, folks, she said. Gird your loins, sorry. Uh, the show will feature a score by Elton John. Wow. And premiere, premiere at London's Domino Theater in October. So this is one I'd be hyper aware of because both you and I are big uh, uh, Devil Wears Prada fans. Yep. I will watch that movie anytime it's on. I just love the dynamic. But I think she's a good choice. Yeah, I think so. She can she can play snooty. Yeah, and she's got to sing. Yeah. So, all right. And then uh, the last thing I saw, Michael Keaton talking about Beetlejuice. He revealed uh, that he and director Tim Burton were hesitant and cautious about making a sequel for the classic, but they ended up having so much fun working on it. He said, "We thought, well, we got to get this right. Otherwise, just don't do it. Let's just go on with our lives and do other things." So I was hesitant and cautious, and Tim was probably equally as hesitant and cautious over uh, all these years. Uh, but he said, once we got there, I said, okay, let's just go for it. Let's see if we can do it, if we can pull this off. And he shared early in production that he and Tim discussed how neither one of them was particularly interested in doing something that was too technology heavy. Yeah. He said it had to feel handmade. <clears throat> uh, what made it fun was watching somebody in the corner actually holding something up for you to watch everybody in the shrunken headroom and say, those are people under there operating these things, trying to get it right. He said the most exciting thing uh, it's the most exciting thing when you get to do that again after years of standing in front of a giant screen pretending somebody across you uh, acro is across the way from you. Uh, so they're going for more practical effects, which I think is really I do cool. love that, and that was part of the charm of the original and the stop-motion stuff and all that stuff that was sort of a, uh, a hallmark of Tim Burton movies. Yep. Uh, Winona Ryder and Catherine O'Hara return, uh, which will also star Jenna Ortega, Willem Dafoe, Monica Bellucci, and Justin Thoreau in new roles. All right, and actually, there was one more thing I wanted to mention. Out off the press, it's just in? That story, yeah. Oscar-winning director Sam Mendes... Oh, yeah. ...is going to make four different huh. movies about the Beatles. Is it, I'm, I have conflicted feelings on this one. Is it too many? No. Okay. <laughs> For Beatles, I'm excited about I mean, this. On this side of it, it uh, all, but Nick, I know what you're saying. It all seems... if it, And Sam uh, Mendes is solid. So if he can pull this off, yeah. Well, do you know the conceit? Yeah, that it's an uh, individual perspective from each of the band. Correct. Yeah, and, That's and why I, I think it can work. Yeah, I do too. I just like, um, and I, I don't disagree with you, Preston. I'm excited about it. I just wonder if, I hope that there's not too much Beatles overload with the Peter Jackson stuff. And I would make Ron it a Howard murder mystery aboard a train. Wouldn't, you do, wouldn't that be the way to do it, Preston? Make it what? A murder mystery aboard a train. <laughs> I didn't see anything. Um, I, I, I saw it all! I personally... <laughs> I personally can't get enough of them, so I'm now, looking forward to it. Will it be released like all at the same time yeah. on you know like a platform of some sort? Or it was my understanding that they're going to release them together. Okay, so uh, it says in the release strategy for the it says the release strategy for the movies is unclear. Okay, uh, but Sony says that it will be innovative and groundbreaking. So let's say uh, Sam Mendes releases four movies at the same time: John, Paul, Ringo, and and George. Yeah. You have to pick one to go to first. Oh, Paul. Okay. Yeah, without question. He's, he's better. My, he's my favorite. <laughs> You're my favorite. You've always, I love you too. always been my favorite. What about me? And, <laughs> most people, you're their favorite, John. Right, yeah. So it's okay, bud. You love. Uh, all right, we're ready for clips. Jennifer Lopez film, This Is Me, Now a Love Story, and it is a cinematic odyssey. And an introspective retrospective. What? But in this clip, she swears that it's not about her most famous love. Here we go. When you really love somebody, they're always a part of you. There's a presence. 
that they have, even when you move on and maybe you never wind up together, but they are a part of you. And this wasn't about Ben and I, this story. This was about this hopeless romantic journey through life in their search for love. I'd like to apologize <laughs> to Jennifer Garner and our pool boy, Ben Affleck, uh -huh. for incorporating them into my fantasy life. Uh, I apologize to anyone who's been offended by my fictional creations, Chris Agon, the philosopher of evil, and the skull sealer. Uh, this is me now, love story now available on Amazon Prime. Here's our next clip. All 10 episodes of The Family Stallone, season two, <laughs> dropped today. Which means we get a full episode featuring our favorite Stallone moment of the year. Here, Sly and his daughter, <laughs> Scarlett, talk about their experience. Here we go. I was so happy getting to have that experience to meet the Pope. It completely shocked me how funny he is. That yeah. is a moment that I will never, never forget. And the Pope takes a good punch, yeah. so it's a win-win. <laughs> Could you shut up? Uh, My family, daughters. The family Stallone is streaming now on Paramount Plus. That is pretty cool. I, I assume that the Pope was not just um, playing along. He had. To, I mean, you have to know who Stallone is, yeah, even regardless so. of being the Pope or not. Yeah, probably. All right. Uh, with that, we need to take a break because, uh, like I said, we're going live on Fox Good today. We got Todd Glass stopping by. We're going to talk to actor Alan Tudyk. We have Joe Matteris here. We have an announcement about some stuff coming up, and. We have to, re oh, I have to remind you that the uh, 10 Days of Pearl Jam, the song is up and running right now. If you go to WMMR.com, you can find out what today's song is and nice. when to listen for it. When you do hear it be the 25th caller, you get tickets to go to the show that uh, Pearl Jam is playing on September 9th at the Wells Fargo Center. So WMMR.com, go there right now and you will find out. We're going to take a break and we'll be right back. Stay with us. On 93.3 WMMR. All right, thank you, Kathy. All right, so it was uh, quite interesting. Uh, Tuesday morning, <laughs> there was a horse on 95. On Interstate 95, a horse. Mm. At Gerard Avenue. Running at, at, at a full canter. A Gallant. beautiful horse. Free. Yeah. It's main blowing in the wind. Uh. <laughs> Seemingly having a blast. Yeah, yeah. It was just amazing to see that. I think it was terrified, yeah. and that's why it was running, but it looks like he's having a good time. Yeah. Man. Is he indeed? Do we know? I, I, from last night, I was watching the news, and, and, and information was hard to come by yeah. about the owners and about exactly. But the horse seems to be a racing horse, yes? Racing? Oh, that I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't think I don't think it's a thoroughbred. I don't think it, no. I think it was just from like a riding club. Yeah. In, from a in riding the city. club. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I've heard nothing either way. Yeah. So, uh, and in fact, Kathy, you had said that uh, didn't you have information on that they had <clears> bought the horse and it had gotten away from them or something? Yeah, they like had just that? gotten the horse and uh, they brought it to yeah a city riding club and the they, Fletcher Street Urban Riding Club assistant. There you I go. Do, I okay. do know that. So when they asked, they just said somebody let him out. <laughs> Originally, the thought was it was two men in a costume, but the, it was running so well. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> too fast. Yeah, I do. I do see a fair amount of horse trailers uh, with when they're transporting them uh, from time to time. I'm I'm always curious about what horses think about riding and those things and if they think I'm getting the hell out of here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, in your area, you probably have a lot of, right? At Harleysville in the general area? Yeah, yeah. There's a fair amount of, uh, There's we don't really have any horse farms. There are more horse farms out, kind of like Bluebell in that area. When we lived over there, I remember seeing those, but we're more uh, farmland and, and some uh, cattle. You lived in Bluebell? Horses. Yeah. Oh, I didn't realize. I didn't know that. Yeah, when I first moved to the area, which was, you know, in the mid-90s. Okay, before Chichester. Yes, before Chi. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah there's, a, there's a number of nice farms out in the Bluebell area. If you, mm -hmm. you drive through that area, there's farm after farm. They're really pretty. Yeah. And I'm, I'm sure that people see an escaped animal from time <laughs> to time. It's got, it, well, we know for a fact it happens. Years ago, yeah. my father, we had just gotten, I think it was a, when Mazda became a thing and the rotary engine. And it was, oh, this is so cool. He had had the brand new Mazda. He was driving about 30 miles an hour on a, on a street. A well, think of City Line. Uh -huh. And he collided with a horse. <laughs> he hit the horse? Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah, the horse was fine. Okay. Oh my horse gosh. weighed a lot. Yeah. Wow. The Mazda yeah. wasn't exactly built. <laughs> wow. Yeah, but yeah, hit the friggin' horse. God, I'm just I, the, watching this video. I laugh every time. Uh -huh. The poor thing, he was just like hauling ass on 95. Yeah. 
Uh, a friend of mine does live on a farm out in Upper Black Eddy. I talk about her often, my friend Megan. Um, and out there, yeah, like where there are farm animals, they get out all the time. She has this video, uh, another one that just made me laugh. Out of nowhere, all of a sudden, there was this giant cow looking in her window. <laughs> like, and it was it was the neighbor's cow. It just got out of the... <laughs> and she said, and, and uh, her daughter loves the cow. So they go over yeah. and they, they visit the cow. But when there was like over a period of a couple of weeks, it kept getting out. Whatever was happening to the gate, okay. the horse, I mean, the uh, cow kept getting out. But I guess he I, he would just go over and he would look in the window and look for her daughter. All right. <laughs> we, have, we have a farm directly behind our house. And uh, years and years and years ago, a bunch of their chickens got loose oh in the neighborhood. And uh, my neighbor, uh, Anita, had to uh, had to track them down, and you know how we caught them? How we how did he up, catch loose chickens? We ended up using a um, uh, like a comforter, like a big sheet. Oh, yeah, I think it was a comforter. I don't think it was a sheet. And anyhow, you kind of get somebody to to run them, you know, chase them, and then the other person with the sheet or, or the the. The blanket throws it on top of and them. And sort of immobilizes yeah, them? Or then, like, like, you, like putting a snake like a, in a dark bag? It's like a net. Right. And then you get in there and you grab the chicken. And, and then you hit it with a hand. You choke yeah. a chicken. <laughs> and then you go. I'm choking my chickens. Uh, but, uh, and I told you guys, my uh, at the beginning we were talking about this in the news break. Um, we, when I was a kid, we we owned a horse. And uh, and I was, this is like pre-K. I mean, I was. these are some of my earliest memories. Yeah, I don't ever remember you saying you had a horse. Yep, the horse, Goldie, got out of the enclosure. We, we didn't own it. Uh, Goldie didn't live on our property. Right, he was kept somewhere else on a farm uh, or a horse farm, and uh, but but Goldie escaped, and I don't know if my dad was there when it happened or whatever. But anyhow, the horse gets out, and then it was just like the family emergency. We gotta find the horse. Yeah. Uh-huh. So everybody, all our friends and family, all got in their cars. They split up and they went looking for the horse. Eventually found it. I don't know how we corralled it per se, but did the horse happen into a bar with a bartender? Why the long face? Why the long face? My neighbors, my next door neighbors, growing up, did have a horse. I think I was too young to remember them having. I knew they had a duck too, uh, but I think their horse's name. Your was, duck runs fast. That's a horse. Uh, no, the duck's name. No, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> you threw me off there. Um, <laughs> the horse's name was Taffy. I know that Taffy existed as my next door neighbor while I was alive, but I was too young to actually remember it. But they had it. They have like a little. And listen, I live in Rutledge. I live in the suburbs, you know. But uh, they did have a little horse barn. It's and, weird. Mm-hmm. It's we talked about. We've talked about this before. In what you would assume to be, I, I would take. Uh, so I'm in Mount Airy, and I would walk around residential homes, and they're right there. Yeah. Right there. A yeah. guy had a freaking horse yeah, on his front lawn and not a, a huge tract of land. Now, he, he had a vehicle, obviously, for moving the horse. Yeah. But right there in a residential, fairly dense suburban area was this horse. Yeah, there's a, a family that lives mm, two blocks away from me that has a donkey in their backyard. And I had heard that they had donkeys. had a donkey. I do. They're great. But I had heard that they had a donkey. Um, and, and then, uh, I, so I hear about it. And then like two weeks later, I'm just like in my front yard and I just hear, ah, <laughs> I mean, you can hear them from like really, really far away. Can you play with your donkey? But I do kind of feel bad for it. Cause when you drive past the house, you can see like a little sliver of their backyard yeah. where the donkey pen is. And he's there all by himself. Oh, oh, yeah. Get an like, elephant. Our friend Katie, the horse lady oh. hey. is on the line. She's called us many times. Hi, Katie. Good morning. Hey guys, good morning, and how are you? We're doing well. So obviously, you saw the story, right? Yeah, and everybody on the planet sent it to me of because course. I'm the quote unquote horse person in their life. So yeah, so um, what, yeah. What what did you Perfect. gather from uh, uh, from what you saw? I just watching it. You know, it's like it's like nails on a chalkboard. First of all, watching a horse gallop on like macadam like that, it's just like the scariest thing because. Some of them, if they have shoes, um, they can actually slip quite a bit yeah. on the macadam, and I just kept waiting to see it go down. But they also, some horses that are meant to, like, drive carriages and that sort of thing on macadam, they put, like, extra metal on the bottom of the shoe so that they can actually grip. So, so okay. would it be your guess that, 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 that this, I mean, the, the horse seemed to be okay and was going at a full clip. If it was any sort of pain, the horse probably would have stopped, correct? Yeah, yes and no. I mean, if they have, I mean, you've seen race horses, unfortunately, they'll just run, 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 even if one of their legs is, you know, going right, out. Right, right, right. Um, it looked okay to me, you know, at you know, first glance, but they could have, like, internal, like, you know, um, like ligaments or tendon damage or whatever if they're if they're galloping on the macadam like that. It's really not healthy for them to be, be galloping for that long on the hard surface. Right. Um, it, it was... Per- 
It's, Go ahead. Um, it's a, it's, it is, it's a lot for them um, to be doing that, but they have such a strong, you know, fight or flight instinct. They're flight animals. So he, I'm sure he was terrified and was looking for other horses or, you know, trying to find the herd to run to, to be safe. Um, but they're lucky hey. they ended up getting him and not, it, there wasn't worse than that. Katie, I have a question uh, about horseshoes. So obviously that technology has been around for a long, 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 long time and obviously needed. If uh, horses in the wild, obviously they don't get shoes. Do, uh, right. do do they sometimes, will they sustain injuries that are life-threatening if they don't have shoes? No, nope, some horses don't, um, don't ever get shoes. There's like a whole actual community of farriers that, um, that will trim a horse's foot so that it doesn't need a shoe. And if the horse has like healthy enough and hardy enough feet, you don't have to put shoes on them. Oh. Um, horses in the wild don't get shoes because they're, they, we, we as, you know, humans take these animals and we put them in stalls and we don't let them roam around like they normally would out on the, you know, they roam 24 seven when they're in the wild. And so okay. They naturally wear down their feet and so they don't need them to be trimmed. So I assume in the wild, they're more prone because it's more casual. They're probably wearing slippers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sometimes maybe a stiletto now and again. <laughs> Uh, so in, in nature, though, they would they would wear down their natural, their hooves to to right. uh, properly because of the different alien uh, places we're putting them into. That's why they yes. put the shoes on them. Gotcha. Exactly. And the different things we do with them. You know, they don't naturally go into sand arenas and chase, you know, cows right. or, right. you know, whatnot or jump Hey, jumps, Katie, like. how many times have you had to go and wrangle uh, uh, a horse that's gotten away? Too many times. Yeah. Too many times. And my poor husband, we used to live on, on a huge farm that I managed and I was out one night and he could hear, you can hear it, the horses, <laughs> horses got loose and he can hear you and he can hear the whinnying and the snorting and and because they all get upset. If somebody gets out, they're like, you know, Fred, get out. You know, we want to be out with Fred. <laughs> <laughs> so they'll get excited. They make noise. Are, are, are they are they kind of are they kind of escape experts? Are they kind of, you know, good at getting out? Some of them. Yeah, some of them can be. We had one that we used to, we had to put electric around the top of the fence because he knew that literally the grass was, quote unquote, green around the other side. So he would jump the fence and go eat the grass on the other side. And he wouldn't go very far. He just would go where the grass was greener. Um, but yeah, and, and I wanted to say that we have, I live in Malvern and there's, it's a, in another little pocket of tons of horse farms, but also surrounded by, you know, lots of roads and cars and that sort of thing. And they actually, a group of, um, farms in the area got together and they taught the police, the Willstown police, um, how to uh, catch a horse, a loose horse, because it happens all the time. Oh. And so they actually carry some of the cruisers. They have um, halters and lead ropes and a bucket, because that's usually your best bet if you have a loose horse, if you have some sort of bucket with grain or um, or treats or apples that you can shake around, then usually they know that sound and they're very, oh. very good. I didn't realize, yeah, because I was wondering, how, how do you, because they, they had, yeah. were able to stop this horse and get this horse, you know, recaptured again, but I'm like, that's... How do you just, you know, you, uh, you yeah, just guess? You have to, I mean, you, you have to, you kind of have to corner them if you can and not corner them to the point where they feel like they need to bolt again, you know, corner them and try to get them to come down a little bit and usually bribe them a little bit and get a rope around their neck and then a halter on them. And then usually they, usually they're okay. And they're usually exhausted by the time you get to them. <laughs> you know, it's interesting, Katie, I, I do have a question aside from all this. So my dad lives in Kentucky, his house, backyard backs up to Calumet Farms, which is very famous. Yes. Uh, horse uh, Even I'm aware for, of that. for thoroughbreds. And uh, so when we go there, sometimes the, the thoroughbreds, they're literally, they you, they are racing horses. They will come up to the fence and they'll get close enough where we can, you know, take pictures with them and stuff like that. And we've tried to feed them carrots or apples and stuff like that, and they wouldn't take it. Mm. And I was like, they must they must be on some super yeah. strict diet to pass up a yeah, treat like that. Yeah, it's interesting. And they, if, they're, if they're pretty full, you know, some of them can be picky. <laughs> some of them actually, I, I had an ex-race horse, and I was told, I don't know a lot about racing, but I was told that some trainers just won't even give race horses um, treats like that, like mm. apples and carrots. And so some of them, might not, they might not have even known what they were. They don't know what they were. Did you purchase that <laughs> apple at your supermarket with your sleeveless shirt? <laughs> <laughs> How's Molly Hatchet doing these days? <laughs> Reginald, come here, look at this. Look at this. He, he thinks this is an apple. It's adorable. <laughs> All right, Katie, we're going to take some other calls, but thank you very much. We appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Have a good day. All right. See you later. Man. Horses, that, are, horses are wonderful, though. Oh my God. I mean, they're just beautiful Amazing. animals. Uh, my niece was, uh, you know, just massively into them for a while. And they're just, but they are a ton of work and they're very expensive. And they are, uh, they are large, 
And, and I don't want to say scary and that you look at them like you would a bear and be afraid. Yeah. But if you get up next to them and they nudge over to you or whatever, you realize, oh, this is a weight of like a car. Uh-huh. And they can do whatever they, they do want damage. to to me if they want to. But typically to. they're not that. aggressive animals. No, no, well, not at all. Growing up, Kathy, we had a horse yeah. farm right next to a bear farm. Yes. And <laughs> it was much different, Preston. Yes. Yeah. And they were constantly getting out. No, they are very gentle creatures. And, and, and they can be. And I actually watched an Instagram reel yesterday of this little toddler, maybe two to three years old, grabs the horse's lead, yeah. right? And then just starts walking away and the horse is like, all right, let's go, buddy. And the yeah. horse just like followed along with this little kid. Kyle Dunnigan does a great bit about that because he says they, they're how big they are. And, and you know, they, oh, okay, I guess I'm going over here. Yeah. You, you know, it's like, uh-huh. no, you don't have to. Uh, let me go to Alex. Hi there, Alex, you're on the air. Good morning. Hi, Alex, you're on the air. Good morning. There's a robot in the room. Oh There's a God. robot in the room. I'm so sorry. I should have known <laughs> that when you Christ. didn't answer the first Be careful. time. careful. All right. What's up, man? Hey, guys. Kazooks. Um, I just want to tell you guys about my mom. She has four mini Highland cows. We live in the Redding area, Birch County. All right. Um, the first day she got her first two, they're named Winnie and Mateo. Winnie was <laughs> cool as a cucumber. Uh, Mateo was a little feistier, and he gets spooked really easily <clears throat> one day. The first day he got to the farm, I think it was the first day of the first week, he broke out of the fence. And we live in a countryside area, so we kind of just sent the whole family hunting for him, um, including the farmers that helped take care of him across the street. It took about an hour. We found him. We all had to circle him. <laughs> oh, <Like>, dude. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, all, we all had to circle him and, and try and get him to stay put. And then eventually my dad just had to tackle him to get a lasso around him and make sure that he stayed. Oh, my God, Alex. We're looking at the mini Highland cow picture. They're, they're adorable. They're cute. Yeah. yeah. Oh, they're adorable. They're small, but they are beefy. Like, don't, um, don't think because they're small, they don't weigh 200-something pounds. They're, oh, yeah. They're big boys. Um, but, yeah, they're, they're awesome. They've, they've been absolutely beautiful and excellent ever since. They just get spooked easy. Oh no! Okay. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Right. Yeah, they're not they're not meant for the modern modern amenities like yeah. cars backfiring and things like that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All right, thanks, Alex. So his dad had to tackle one. I think I'd be pretty good at lassoing. Do you think so? Oh, I dude. do think I would. Be. I yeah. think that's something we need to um, test dude. right here in the studio. I, I would like to. I would like to learn with an actual lasso <laughs> how to rope. I think I, think I would be cool. too. In, in yeah. the the times that I've made my own lasso and had to lasso things like on the table or whatever, I've actually done pretty good. But the rope they use is actually stiff. Um, I used to have uh, one. Yeah, I, okay. I forget who bought it for. Those me. are pretty cool. An authentic. Lasso, you're right. Taking so your rope tricks and starts, things, yeah. yeah, and like doing the thing where you jump in and jump out. Yeah, it's the rope actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. I Very do cool. feel bad watching like the rodeo people do that with the, the you know when they lasso the. You feel bad? Oh, feel when, like, yeah. when they lasso the the, yeah, the cow, yeah. the cows just run in. Yeah, but I did. <laughs> I did see something. Yeah, they do get taken yeah. down pretty. I hard. did see something funny the other day where I guess these good old boys were down in some barn somewhere and they had a gauntlet of people with lassos and you have to. People, not animals. People have to run through the gauntlet to try not get not to get lassoed. Dude, it was awesome. You could get they could catch her on your neck yeah, and snap die. Your neck, yeah, yeah, but they that's didn't. what happened to Stephen Hawking. That's not what happened to Stephen Hawking. <laughs> oh he no, had ALS or something like that. What did he have? <laughs> I had no idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, oh, I thought it was a lasso. <laughs> I thought incident. it was a lasso thing in a pub in um, England. Okay, you watch it. It's I mean these are you know professional cowboys yeah. and stuff, but uh, and I think they're trying to lasso the dude's legs. Okay. So the dude so he falls made, on his face. Yeah, yeah. So he falls on his face. Yeah, so break in the neck, dirt. You know? In the dirt. You know. Yeah. I've seen these. These are these are fun though. Yeah. In fact, we're looking at a video of the thing they practice on, which is this this fixed faux steer, I yep. guess. Yep. But uh, yeah, I, I'm I'm like you, Preston. I've always been fascinated with the the lasso yeah. tricks and all that stuff. Yeah. And whips. Uh, I'm gonna go and uh, and uh, gimp masks. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm gonna go to Mike next. Hey, Mike. Morning, bud. Good morning, guys. Hey, How good you morning. To see you, man. What's up? Hi, Mike. I was on, well, let me tell you my, my loose horse story. Mm-hmm. I, was on, I was coming home from work, and I was on Ridge Avenue near 33rd Street in North Philadelphia. I'm sitting in a light, and next thing you know, a loose horse comes tearing <laughs> past the front of my truck and almost hit me. So then I think, you know, I'm going to call 911 before anyone gets hurt, including the horse. And you can imagine they didn't believe me at first. And they were asking me all these different questions. And I said, well, 
This horse ran by and it had this blue thing on its nose, and I didn't know what it was. And they never said, well, what do you mean a blue thing? I said, I don't know. I, I didn't see bananas in a long time. I have no idea what, what it was. You just try to describe the friggin' horse. God, get off my yeah, back yeah. here. Then, then they asked me what color it was. And, I'm, and I said, well, it was brown. But then I thought, how many loose horses do they have in North Philly? <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> so, yeah. so anyway, I don't Hopefully they captured it. I never know what ever happened. To oh, them. really? Okay. Maybe it integrated <laughs> into society nice. and has been living uh, a you know, double life. Appreciate it, bud. Yeah. Uh, let me see. Connor's been on hold for a long time. I'll go to him. Hey, Connor, good morning, sir. What's up? What's going on? Yeah, buddy. You tell me. So uh, I wrote crew, and we're on the Schuylkill a lot. Yeah. And a couple weeks ago, so like practice is starting to wind down, and I look, I look to my, my left, and on Kelly Drive, there's a cowboy riding a horse. Yeah. It was, it was crazy. Connor, that's the horse that escaped yesterday, escaped from uh, something on uh, some stable on Kelly Drive. Who do you who do you row for? Uh, St. Joe's Prep. All right. St. Joe's Prep. So, and by the way, the, the, the Idris Elba movie about the, the yes. is right right in Philadelphia in proper. Philly. Yeah. yeah. They, then they have the stables, and, the, and you'll see those those guys who look like cowboys. Oh, it was, it was crazy. Yeah. Like, we were just like, Paddling along, yeah. And I heard like clop, 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 clop. <laughs> and then I'm like, oh my god, there's a horse. Yo, Connor, you know what's crazier than seeing a horse ride on Kelly Drive is being on a boat on the river in the middle of February. I can't uh, believe you're doing that, bro. No, nah, it's all right. It's good. Uh, all right. All right, man. Appreciate it, Connor. Thank you, bud. Those all guys, right. by the way, the St. Joe's Prep crew team, they're like the best in the area. They're, oh, yeah? Uh, yeah. In fact, we, uh, Kathy, yeah, we had the coach the, on. The crew coach on last year. Okay. Uh, let me go next to, I have uh, Becky. Hi, Becky. Good morning. Good morning. How are you guys? Great, Becky. What's up? So I was in sixth grade. My sister and I, I grew up in Bucks County, rural Bucks County. My sister and I, every morning, had to walk our pony, Snowy, out to the pasture. Aww. My dad would walk with us. Can you play wildfire, Case? <laughs> wildfire? <laughs> he, would, um, he would walk with us and take us to school because he was the school superintendent. So he would drop us off and we were good to go. But one of our dogs scared the pony. The pony got away from us and took off through the woods. My sister and I begin to cry hysterically. Yeah. My dad hands us the dog and jumps into his car, drives down our driveway, which is like a quarter mile long. He describes it to us. He can see the pony streaking across the cornfield. <laughs> he can also see the school bus coming that stops at the bottom of our hill. Whoa. He slams on the brakes, <laughs> runs out of his car. He's in his suit and his tie. He puts his hand out and he stops the school bus just in time to grab the lead line of the pony as she's coming across the street. Well, and <laughs> save the, the pony's life. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He, he has to walk the pony all the way home. And he never heard the end of it at school about how he was stopping school buses and catching ponies before work. He was oh. he was a hero, and for his, for the girl, for you guys. I mean, we, yeah. I knew so many girls growing up who were expect the equestrian thing. Oh, all deep. girls go yeah. through a horse phase. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, my cousin went all through girls. a horse phase <laughs> and is still going through it as a thirty-some year old woman. But some yeah. people, some people, yeah, song. some people stay with it. I mean, I almost definitely I rode some, horses. some it sticks through. Yeah, I'm sorry, Kathy. I rode horses for a long time, all through uh, middle school and high school. Um, but my neighbors' kids, they ended up buying a horse because it was. You know, they're both did. They had two girls that were into riding, and it was easier for them to just buy a horse. We know Dr. Petula, my dentist, Dr. Kristen Petula. She's and she loves and talks about the horses, and 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 it, it's a whole lifestyle. It's a lot of work, yeah. but it, it and but it it seems very enriching for the people who engage in it. Yeah, there's a girl who grew up two blocks away from me uh, in Rutledge. Okay, and we're the same exact age, and you know, you connect with people on Facebook. So between somewhere between college and a Adulthood, I had no idea that she was an equestrian <clears throat> uh, or a rodeo. And she lives in North Carolina, and she's like, a, I, I guess, a professional wrestler. <laughs> she glow. <laughs> Gorgeous ladies of wrestling. Is that crazy? She revamped it. No, my, my buddy's sister was a barrel rider. That's and, wow. Yeah. And, and those we are would, cool. We would go to those uh, to the rodeos and, and watch, and it's some intense stuff that they do, man. So, so to me, I think you'd probably you enjoy that more than the lassoing stuff, right? Where you feel like, like that. Well, that's, yeah. And and, uh, and uh, the jumping, the uh, what do they call the um, the, the the steeple? Yeah. 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 What steeple is this? Chase. Who is this? Uh, Michael Murphy. Uh, Michael Martin Murphy. Never heard Wildfire. No. Oh, do, 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 do you like this song? Right, right I here. love yeah, this it's beautiful. song. Beautiful. Here's the chorus right here. She ran cold in wildfire. She ran cold in wildfire. The horse 
Bruce's name was Wildfire. Oh. And it broke out in the middle of a big storm and ran away into the night. And it died a horrible death, a froze death. Yeah, it was oh. shot by a guy in a suit. <laughs> shot by a guy in a suit? Yeah. I had no idea. That that was that must have been the fourth verse. Yeah, there's a fourth I didn't know that. All right, well, anyhow, thank you for your calls. We appreciate it. The horse is safe. That's good. Uh, it was, But uh, the video's great. It, it was just... Trucking along 95, oh God, like way so faster funny. than most of you go on your commute. <laughs> yes. Uh, we do have to take a break because we are going to go live on Fox. Good day in just a moment. And then should we announce this when we get back? Yeah. All right. We have an announcement about an event that's on the way, and we'll do that too with the Bizarre Files. Stay with us. we got a lot coming up. Todd Glass, Alan Tudyk, and Joe Mattery stopping by. We'll be right back. It happened. It happened. All right, 7.55 on this Wednesday morning, Preston and Steve show. We will go live on Fox Good Day in less than a minute, Kathy. So we're going to hold off and do traffic in just a little while because we've got about 30 seconds before we return. But heads up, we're going to do uh, The Bizarre File after we talk to Mike and Alex uh, and get traffic. Uh, but then we have, uh, after the B file, we have an announcement about an event that's on the way that you may find interesting. Apologies, I've got it little congestion thing going on. So uh, make sure you stick with us for that because we've got some info that you might appreciate, my friend. We should hear the music, and there it is. Going live on Fox Good Day. Here we go. Uh, hey, Preston and Steve, I have a quiz for you. Uh, I'd like to get the opinion of everybody over there at Amber okay. A new survey says a certain gender, male or female, outspends the other gender when online shopping specifically, <laughs> Preston, is it a man or is it a woman? Well, one might guess that it's a woman, especially with Kathy Romano holding the world record of online shopping. <laughs> Thank, here you. In the studio. Thank you very much. But I'm going to say because it's, a, it's an interesting thing to bring up, maybe guys spend more and we didn't realize it. Steve, what say you? I'm going to have to recuse myself because I'm familiar with the <laughs> findings here, but I will agree with oh. Preston. <laughs> You're right. It ah, says hey! men, men outspend women online. Do you? So I will say this. I find that I turn to online shopping for therapy, for a pick me up, for, and I, I, like the other day, I, I got a too. tiny little Godzilla in the mail from Amazon. Little Godzilla statue. It was the greatest day of my life. <laughs> hey, you know what? Maybe we're not considering is maybe <clears throat> women are better at finding deals. In That's it. Because you're saying that, that men be. spend more money. Mm -hmm. We're just too stupid to look for we're the good deal. Blowing the money. Yeah, I blowing. can see that. Or to yeah. wait until the sale you know, is coming up. And Coupon then. codes, I Kathy. online shop almost exclusively, which I shouldn't do. I should go out you to You Instagram these. shop. You like that. And I've stopped Instagram uh, buying mm -hmm. because people <laughs> have been stealing my credit card information. Oh. Really? Oh. So I, I have no. not had that happen. It's, yeah. I, I, I believe it's fake <laughs> Instagram accounts. Do you, do, when you see those ads pop up on Instagram, report them. I, I reported two things. I ordered a replica of the Enterprise from the new Strange New World series. He was hoping to put that next to his Godzilla statue. Next to my Godzilla statue. I wouldn't even insult the Godzilla statue with what I got. Garbage, threw it right out, reported it on Instagram. And I, I encourage people, Mike, on that point. When you see something advertised on Instagram and it says comments, click on the comments. A lot of times you'll see there are no comments. They're creating a trap for you to order that thing. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to fall for it anymore. Yeah. Me oh, well. either. I'm not ordering anything. Until <laughs> 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 next time. So does this mean that you guys will leave us alone then about our shopping? Because now we know that yeah. you do it more. I <laughs> never complain. I never I never complain yeah. about, about my wife's shopping no. uh, at all. Preston, okay. do you give your wife garbage about shopping? No, no, not at all. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I, I do. I shop as well online. It's I, my wife's drug yeah. smuggling that I, I complain about. No, no, okay. Well, yeah, 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 a little bit. But I think the interesting thing is this survey says you guys are spending it all on shoes. We spend what? as much money as women on shoes. Oh, get out! That's Not interesting. Me. Well, no, maybe, right? maybe yeah. there's a case because I, I buy new hiking shoes. I go through them quickly, so every couple of months I'm buying a new pair. Mm. So that might be true. We work with Pancake, though. Yeah. He probably has spent more on shoes than <laughs> anyone who works at this station and your station together. You're right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't buy shoes on Instagram anymore because they, the ones I've got, I said, well, the guy, they look great, but they're really inexpensive. And they were basically rubber. <laughs> <laughs> like Crocs? 
<laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, that kind of material. Formal Crocs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. All right, yeah. we'll go back to spending. All right, we will. We'll see you next week. All right, guys, take care. Good to see you. All right. Uh, so we skipped traffic. Let's go ahead and get that now then, Kath. What do we have this morning? 95 mm. southbound jams from the Platte Bridge to 420. This is because the accident's still out there. Two right lanes are blocked. Uh, on 95 southbound out of the northeast, Slowing Academy to Cotman. Once you get to the Vine, westbound. Heavy 8th to the Schuylkill. The accident there cleared eastbound from the Schuylkill to Broad. Schuylkill Expressway eastbound, slowing from Mall Boulevard into Gulf Mills, uh, then slow from City Avenue to uh, Belmont westbound, past Young to South Street, the Boulevard to Gladwin. Uh, route 1 out in Bucks County southbound between Rock Hill Drive and the Pennsylvania Turnpike jammed, and that was because of an accident, but the accident uh, has since been cleared. 495 northbound between Route 13 and Philadelphia Pike, we've got the right lane block. That's a disabled vehicle. Emergency construction uh, now only has the right lane block, so they've been able to open some lanes here north on the New Jersey Turnpike at that inner outer split and 195 exit 7A. 42 North slows Coles Road to 295. Uh, and then on Route 73 northbound uh, 38, we have some traffic there. Southbound 295 to Church Road. This traffic report brought to you by WeBuyAnyCar.com. Avoid the hassle or selling privately or dealing with a dealer. We Buy Any Car is the fast and fair way to sell. Get your car's valuation now at WeBuyAnyCar.com. And that's your traffic on 93.3 WMMR. Bizarre. <laughs> WMMR presents Bizarre. Kristen and Steve's Bizarre. Bizarre File. Brought to you today by Horizon Services. You can get your system checked today and even get $50 off any repair at horizonservices.com backslash WMMR. Man, do I have great stories for you this morning. Uh, we'll begin with this one. A man who mixed his sperm with his father's. No. <laughs> No. To help get his partner pregnant no. will not be forced to take a paternity <laughs> test. The high court has what ruled. What the hell? Dear God yeah. in heaven. Uh, the Dad, man, can I borrow something? Identified uh, as... Just P ring out that sock. Identified as PQ as he cannot be named for legal reasons. And his partner, JK, had experienced uh. fertility problems and were not able to afford IFV treatment. As a result, he agreed to mix his sperm with his father's, which God. was then injected into the woman. The arrangement, which Justice Poole was informed had been always intended to keep uh, be kept secret, led to the birth of an now five-year-old boy. But once uh, the council became aware of the circumstances of the boy's conception, this is in England, by the way, as a result of separate proceedings, it launched a legal bid to determine his parentage. Uh, the authority called upon the High Court in Sheffield to direct the DNA test should be carried out to determine whether the man was D's father. By the way, the boy's name is D. They use he all initials. He is not. However, <laughs> the men. Uh, in a judgment handed down on Thursday, Poole dismissed the bid, saying that he found the council had no stake in the outcome. Uh, he told the court uh, it may wish to know who is De D's biological father, but it has no stake in the outcome of its application. Wow. I wish to uphold the public interest in maintaining accurate records of births does not confer a person inter interest into determination of such an application. So, this court so, will determine whose splooge is responsible for the child. Yes. So the dad could just be the bro could really be the brother. Could be. Could be. Yeah. So the it's judge so effed up. <laughs> concluded that the family may wish to undergo a paternity test to tell the child at a later date, but that is a matter for them. Uh, th uh, throughout the We've case, submitted both samples to a taste test. The <laughs> judge said that the family had created a welfare minefield, adding, I cannot believe that JK, PQ, and RS properly... <laughs> Thought they could uh, it's thought like the ram fortune. ramifications of their scheme for JK to have become pregnant. Otherwise, it is unlikely that he would have embarked upon it. Blah, blah, blah. So I thought that oh was my interesting. Oh, God. How about this one? A man in Texas was arrested <laughs> <laughs> after officials say he was seen in an antique store placing items in his rectum and then putting them back on the no! shelves. No! No! Uh, no! <laughs> Oh, my God. Man. What are you doing with that Russian nesting doll? Dude, uh -huh. this gets better. Constable Mark Herman's office received several calls on February 15th about a man inside an antique mall. Young man, what are you doing with that hairbrush? Uh, the man was seen taking items from multiple vendors and placing them in his rectum, official said, and then he would place those items back on the shelves, according to the constable's office. The man was seen on surveillance footage grabbing items off the shelf Putting the items up his kilt. What's he this? was wearing oh, a kilt, well, yeah. so for easy mm -hmm. product testing. Okay, makes the sense. The items were disposed of, according to officials. A warrant was issued for the man, and he was arrested on charges of criminal mischief, 
He was given a $100 bond. Well. And we'll have to go to court afterwards. How about this? Wow. You go to a shoe store. You try on the shoes, mm-hmm. right? If yeah. your purpose is to find something to put in your ass, you have to make sure it's the right thing. Maybe he'll go with that in his defense. Too. Yes. I'll right. handle his case. Uh, in New York City, uh, Ian Forrest was passionately performing for Evening Rush commuters at the Herald Square subway station. Uh, he plays the cello. And a woman came up behind him, and there's video of this, yeah. and hit him in the back of the head with his own water bottle. I mean, she clocks him with it. It's so insane. There's a guy just playing music, yeah. make, making the whole experience pleasant for people commuting. Like a heavy water bottle? Yeah, she, yes. yeah she, wow. exactly. she clocks him. Uh, Forrest, a medical student and electric cellist with the stage name of Eyeglasses, says that the random attack happened February 13th. It was called on video. His assaulter appeared to be... Leaning on a column when looking at her phone, she suddenly put the device in her tote bag, marched over behind Forrest, grabbed his metal water bottle, and forcibly struck him in the head. Wow. Is it possible she was activated by a message she got on the phone, must kill cellist? He said, I just felt in the middle of the performance some terrible con- collision to the back of my head. He said he didn't know what had caused all that pain. He was disoriented. Police said they are searching for the woman. Mm. Uh, Tuesday's incident was the second time in less than a year that he's been attacked as a subway performer. Uh, the first was in Times Square where someone attempted to rob him of his instrument. And he said, I don't think I can do this anymore. No. He announced on his Instagram two days later, I'm suspending subway performances indefinitely. So we're watching the video of this. She just wails him in the back of the head. Sadly, she's bundled up. She's got a muffler over her face. Yeah, yeah the musician had been entertaining locals and tourists in subway stations for nearly a decade. He also performed the national anthem at Madison Square Garden last December. And he's now questioning the longevity of his time underground. So that's just Poor terrible. guy. Yeah. All right, here's another winner. A zoo guest who decided to climb a wall to enter a lion enclosure to apparently take a selfie. I know this is a shocker. Was mauled to death by an animal on Thursday. The man identified as Prahlad Gujar climbed the wall and chain link fencing at the Sri Venkateswara Zoological Park in India. Hey, buddy. Jumped. Jumped into the enclosure despite warnings from a zoo employee. Oh, you're going to have a hell of a selfie. After seeing the human being inside the enclosure, the animal attacked him. Uh, The zoo said, though the animal keeper and other security staff nearby tried to save the person, the animal dragged the person inside the enclosure. Uh, He was dead within 10 minutes. So this is obviously just an idiot trying to take a selfie, but I wonder how many times they thwart attempted Death by suicide by animal mm. at these yep. zoos, you know? Uh, the 12 year old lion was uh, put in his night house while authorities recovered the body. Uh, Gujar appeared to be intoxicated before jumping into the enclosure. Why be tartar? Uh, the enclosure has a four foot wall and six foot iron fence around it. The zoo said this is the first time an incident like this has happened, and it will review its security to make sure that it does not happen again. Did you see the footage of the, the hippo almost breaching? The enclosure it was in, no, like, and the, yeah, and the, the the security guard, I forget where it was, uh, at is literally going up and hitting, tapping, you know, the the hippo on the nose to kind of dissuade him from coming out. But he was, wow. he, he was about to get out. Wow, that's messed up. All right, and there you go. That's what I have in the B five. More <laughs> great stories to share with you guys later on. Plenty of them, by the way. And that is it. So uh, I got this email. I want to pass along to you. Uh, and then I'm going to mention something that we have to announce. Uh, I got this from Heather McMahon, uh, first grade teacher, Haddonfield Friends School. Oh. She said, good morning, Preston. My wonderful boyfriend and huge Preston and Steve fan was born on February 29th, 1972. He will be 13 next week. Aww. Uh-huh, that's beautiful. Could you please give him a shard out? I know that he'd love it so much. Thank you. That's from Heather McMahon. So first, let's do a shard out. And then let's announce this. We here at the President and Steve Show are going to have a Leap Day birthday party in our studio. I love these. Thursday, February 29th. So for those who were born... On February 29th, we have a few slots to be one of our invited guests that morning. And here's what you got to do. You go to the contest page at WMMR.com and you can enter to win a spot to join us that particular morning. And we'll have all the birthday party trappings Yes, for that particular morning because, I mean, you only get a birthday once every four years for crying out loud. Let's get, do something fun. You get boned out of your proper celebration. So yep. we're going to give you a little bit, oomph, a little bit of oomph. 
And I think we haven't done this in eight years. We did this eight years ago, right, yeah. Nick? Yeah, I'm looking through some of the photos, and apparently, for some reason, we had Pituation dressed up like the Hulk and Gary Lauer <laughs> as one of the characters from Frozen. Okay, yeah, there must what? have been something going on well, there, Well, mascots, yeah. Oh, Hulk yeah. smash. Yeah. Well, and not only that, for, for a kid's birthday party, yeah. Yeah, that made sense. we had uh, some people dressed up in costume because, think about it, you may be in your 50s, but you're only, you know... <laughs> 12 years old. What if you never had the chance to have like a Spider-Man come to your birthday party or a theme party or an American girl party? Yeah. So we are going to do this. Uh, you and a guest will get to attend our Leap Day birthday party here in the studio. It's sponsored by Live Casino and Hotel Philadelphia. So go to WMMR.com, click the contest page and enter to win. And just, it's going to be a hang in the morning and we'll yeah. have some birthday party fun here. When was the last time you guys had a, a real straight up kids birthday party at your house? It's been a while, right? For uh, it's been a long time. Yeah. yeah. Long, mm -hmm. long time. And they're fun. They are. They're definitely fun. So uh, get on board, sign up for that now, and maybe you'll end up being in here with us that particular morning. We have so many things coming up. Besides that, that's the most recent thing. Then, like, immediate the next day, <laughs> we're at the Cardboard Classic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, that night, we, we head up to Scranton, and we go to Montage Mountain and get ready for that. That is looming largely. And then, just a couple weeks after that, spring training in yeah. Clearwater. We got a lot going on. A ton of stuff. These are things that you can be a part of as well. Just go to WMMR.com or PrestonSteve.com, get the information, and get yourself set to join us. I want to take a break now because Todd Glass is scheduled to be in our studio next. He's got a whole string of shows coming up that you want to be a part of. We have a few more guests joining us after that as well. Stay put. We'll be right back. Preston and Steve. All 93.3 WMR. Gross. <laughs> in the street on Ends two with Prime through February 27th while supplies last. Shop in store or online. Terms apply. And that's your traffic on 93.3 WMMR. Passion can interchange. Yes. yes. Yeah. Famous Passion can interchange. Yeah, yeah, which is that. where the planes land. Our next guest is performing a whole stretch of shows. And some of these shows are selling out, friends. Better so get on it. Make sure you get them now. Uh, we're talking about Northern Liberties, Bourbon and Branch, and very few people on the show have their own jingle, but we have one well, for him. Todd, Todd Glass. There it is, yes, of course. Oh, Todd, Todd Glass. Our good friend Todd Glass yeah. is here. Yeah! Thank you. yeah. Come on. Oh my God, there's actually some people here today. Work in the crowd. Yeah! yeah. 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 This show yeah. should do with the applause. Yeah. I curse too. Anyway, <laughs> hi, Todd Glass. Good to see you, Todd. Oh, I'm ready. I'm t today. I came in. It's a new Todd Glass. How so? Well, if you like the old Todd Glass, you're like, I like the old Todd Glass. Yeah. I got to lift it up a little. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Preston. You got it, buddy. Wow. Um, you didn't have to give me the finger. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's a new Todd Glass. Todd glass. No, we did glass. love. We were yeah. big fans of the old Todd Glass. I'll be the old Todd yeah. Glass. Okay. This is the new Todd glass. glass. Wow, that didn't last long. You were no, stuck I'm in the <laughs> sewer yesterday for a little bit. What? You were stuck in the sewer yesterday for a little bit. I saw. Uh, yes, I saw yeah, so yeah, that yeah. video on your Instagram. Well, let me take my jacket. Put your headphones on. Let him get ready, guys. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm Give ready. Right. Come on, are you yeah. kidding me? Pull your pants on. By the way, that was very unprofessional, Kathy. You're in the middle of the thing, and then you go, hey, one more thing. It's not. You need to have this. My voice down. changed. Wow, well, <laughs> because you were trying to be funny to mess. Because you, okay, I'm back. <laughs> okay. yes. All right, what happened so, on the Instagram? I don't. I haven't been looking at social media for a little while now. You, so. you were trapped in the uh, in the sewer, or, or at least it might have been. They're the new. Pretend. They're the new. What do you call it? I'll do like the same one for like a month or two. Right. You know the Uber videos, and right. now these are. I just thought different places I could be trapped in. So it's like it's hard <laughs> to explain, but it'll show the outside of a warehouse, and it's just me going. Oh my God! I'm trapped in here. <laughs> Somebody oh. let me out. It's just a still of the okay. building. By the way, I love the the whole Uber run was excellent. Yeah, I love this whole conceit. You're making things fresh. You're making you're staying hip for the kids. TikTok's been fun for me. You yeah. know what? I, during the pandemic, I don't know if we talked about this. Probably not, because. Um, it's just I found the vehicle and the bits and this a very yeah. fun. Yes, yeah, sir. Well, and, and Casey, it's awesome because I do follow you on on Instagram, and uh, it was awesome because I actually got to go to your home about a year and a half ago or whatever, and I've and there you had done a stretch of um, videos fire pit where no 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 where you were looking out the window and it was yes. raining and and I saw, saw that window? I saw that window yes he, a, he was kind of the pensive or the more introspective uh -huh. side of Todd Glass yeah. looking through the window making life assertions he would record it. This me looking out the window. That way, if I was on the road and we didn't have any TikToks on file, I could just send him a voice memo because uh. it's all 
It's just me staring. Right. So uh -huh. we could just use the same footage. And it's been um it's been fun. It really yeah. is. I love it. And I love it. And my number and I'm, you know, the the are up to around two hundred and fifty thousand on it. Wow. Cool. Yeah. Well, I need a lot more, but still that's a good uh No, that's a, good a nice chunk. You've got yeah. a so you're closing the gap on Demi Lovato and people like that. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Selena Gomez. Uh, no, listen, that's a that's a good number. Uh, this whole thing, this this uh, um, whole run of shows, is this the most shows you've done at one well, location? This is a very small place. And by the way, just so, I don't know, maybe it's my paranoia. People go, what, why aren't you at Helium? I'm, I have a great relationship yeah. with Helium. I wanted to do a ton of shows just, just to do a ton of shows. So this place holds like 70 people. So my goal is to get up to 13 shows, but we have 11 now. So, and that I'll be able to just show after show after show. Your, your material gets tighter when you can really just go up every night like that. May I just hey. jump in quickly to say this? Yes. You, you're, I love you. your live performance. It's fantastic. You're, you're great. I think this is the optimum way to get the Todd Glass experience because you do, you, you're, you're looking at the audience, you're interacting with the audience. There's all of this energy and this room has to present a, a new sort of approach to you, right? A room this intimate? I think it's also that because it's so small, most people buy their tickets. I mean, the same amount of people will buy their tickets at Helium in advance. Right. But because it's a 275 room, you might end up with some people there that aren't there to see you. Right, right, and right. by right. the way, you get introduced to new people, so it's fine. Yeah. But when it's just your hardcore people that already know you, it just can be a more intimate show. And um, it's, it's just a brick room. It's like all brick, and it's like... It's very cool. It's Is there a lot cool. of pyro in there? Oh, the <laughs> sure. I do. I still do a big show, though. I still got Devin. Can I? Can you do me a favor and yes. I can relax? Let's do it. Yeah. So Devin Calder and, you know, Intern Mary. Yeah. I'll do it. Oh, the, yeah. I'll have a plug festival. Yeah. Yeah, Intern but Mary performs, played the piano, piano for you, right? Right, right. Mm -hmm. he, he plays. But we'll, we'll, I'll give him a little plug where he's playing him and Mary at the end. But, um... Yeah, so everything is good. Um, uh, my mom is still dead. Yes, I heard. Know. Yeah, you know what I said the other day, and it's I, it's twisted. I think it's twisted, but it's funny. I go out of nowhere. I'm hanging out with my friends. They go, I miss when my mom was newly dead because you know people were so nice. Uh -huh. They did get nice. New and everywhere you go, and now she's just been uh, dead for a the while. The world's never as pleasant as when you've lost a loved one. No, yeah, it's yeah. so because every now it depends who it is. It's easier with someone that's had a good life as opposed to it. The younger, the, yeah, the harder yeah. it is. Or, right, sure. but um, right. now it's, it's like a crib death. It's not as pleasant. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I tried to clean it up. I didn't curse, did I? No, no, no. 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 Oh, um, what's the statute of limitations on condolences? Um, I think about a. Sometimes I go up to people 20 years later. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I never got it. I'm sorry about your mom. Well, if you, My mom if you, was... Oh, if you God. haven't seen them, like when, yeah. you, when you eventually see and them, even just, if it's a just, few years later, like yeah. I, I ran into someone and I was like, hey, I haven't seen you since your dad passed. I'm so sorry. And yeah. it was probably two years later. That was later. awesome. Yeah, I don't think there's a lot. I mean, I did. it's not like, like may pretend to say to me like, Hey, I know I haven't seen you in two years. Sorry about your dad. I'm really, yeah. really sorry. I haven't seen you in a while, and uh, I'm so sorry to hear that. Oh, you think on. I just walk around like yeah, thinking about my dead parents all day where you can come up to me two years later? Oh, sorry about that. Why don't you go up to people go, oh, sorry about uh, something else. Right. <laughs> yeah. I don't think of a tragedy. Damn it. That's I exactly right. Why aren't you and saying... too much. Yeah. No, no, you could be... You're fine with that. Yeah, okay. I, I think for you, <laughs> I, I, was, I was wondering how long you would attempt to keep securing free services in consideration. Oh, for, my mom you, would have loved her lawn to be still <laughs> yeah. green landscaped. <laughs> just, just, it was one of the, the greatest marketing uh, ploys I'd ever seen in my uh, life. My oh. mom, she was very appreciative. <laughs> the last thing she said, but I don't want to say it, it makes her look greedy. She goes, Ask President Steve to send me a pile of cash. Hey. I go, but mom, I know, and I never yeah. got to do it. I want to do it in her own. Oh, we feel yeah. terrible oh, now. Man. She would have liked that. Yeah, you we, we have a pile of cash in the, in the office. Yeah. yeah, you cracked me up uh, one of the last times I talked to you on the phone. Uh, I don't want to, <laughs> I want you to tell the story about what your friend had said about. Uh, oh, isn't that too dark? No. 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 Okay. It was hilarious. Okay. Uh, I'll tell you. And just okay. for the people out there who might be a little bit sensitive, this is a dark joke. Yeah, yeah. this is a dark dark joke, but it also comes from a place of reality uh -huh. and love. And I will preface this. My, my mom, uh, you know, like my mom was an amazing person. Yes. She really, really, you don't have to, but 
sometimes her topical behavior, you know, things and, you know, it, yeah. it made it hard to celebrate who she was. So yeah. now that some of that, obviously, because she's not here, is gone, some of that's gone. It's easier to celebrate her. I, and it's and I do all the time in my head, laying right. in bed. I hear a song. I, br I start bawling because yeah. it made me think of, you know, who she was. Um, but some of the topical behavior is gone. So that's where that came <laughs> from. So every time my friend Daniel says... My mom, I'm kidding. People have a right to complain about their mom, but I joke. I go, oh, you're going to complain about your mom? I wish I had my mom. I wish I had her. When she's gone, you're going to miss her. He goes, I know. She tells me that every single time I talk to her. I go, what do you tell her? He goes, I said, I said, Ma, Todd Glass's mom, uh, uh, he said, his mom died. It's the best thing that ever happened. <laughs> <laughs> he said, it's easy. And, and oh, oh, my God. No, because I, I, the reason I commiserate yeah. with that is yeah. when my mom, my, my dad just passed away recently 95 long great life and, and and it's a celebration of of who he was my mom passed away um you know and um they both the parents taught us i think kind of how, how your mom taught us just you gotta you gotta smile you gotta in, find humor and everything and people were coming to the wake and my friends came in looking all solemn and they didn't know how to process everything and I, they got up to the front. I brought them up to the front of the seats, and I said, "See if you know someone, you get good seats." <laughs> and 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 they looked at me like, Jeez. "But it's like, <laughs> you know." And that's but that's my mother would have appreciated that joke, and your mother would have appreciated that Absolutely. joke. Absolutely. And you know what? The, the twisted. It's, it's you know the uh, the. My, my friend said it the best. He goes, if you're just laughing, you're probably not dealing with it well. If you're just crying, that's not necessarily the best. He goes, the best to me is do both. Right. Mm -hmm. You're bawling, you're crying, you're laughing. And that's the healthy way to get there. I always frame it by thinking, what would the person who passed, would, would they want? Would they, would they want you to be a constant blubbering mess? No, they want you to be happy. Now, you're human. You're going to have your mo yeah. moments where you're going to get emotional. But no one who passes goes, God, I hope. Maybe, Kathy, you said you might want to have people crying constantly after you pass. Oh, I want yeah. them like draped over my uh, casket and like this. hey. Oh, no! <laughs> yes. I know I'm supposed to laugh and cry, but all I can do is go, oh my God, what's it going to be like without talking? <laughs> <laughs> ah, I'm going to take my own life. That's right. What I want. Oh, oh, my I want God. people just, I want buffet food. I have Why out there. Why buffet food? <laughs> I mean, like a big party. Oh, okay, okay. Like you have I to do a buffet because like, there's so many people that so want to be there. There's so many people right. you yeah. need buffet. That was and my it favorite have to be idea that for good. a comedy club, by the way. What? A, a buffet. Well, the show's going on. So people can, you know, watch the show, but then they can go over to the buffet and get some <laughs> Do you oh, really want God. that? Oh, no. But wouldn't that no. be funny? That would be the, right the most Our, gluttonous thing yeah. in the world. The worst thing, we we were at a, uh, we had an event and there was a buffet there and there was a guy who oh, showed up. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, really? Yes. 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 Shut up. <laughs> It was, no. listen, like that. dude, it was I'm horrifying. 90% sure it was his heroin spoon. Oh, yeah. no. Yeah. But he had it in his pocket. But he had his pocket. So he used yeah. it. And he was eating out of the stuff. Spoon. Yeah. Like no. to get more. No. <laughs> no, no. Like, a, like a free basing spoon. It was multi-purpose. Yeah. yeah. I had an uncle that showed up to a, one year we emptied out our pool we filled it with sauce, pasta sauce and spaghetti. Sure. Oh, you pull? Right. As one does. <laughs> let, me, let me get my notes here because I don't have to, I know the next thing we know, we go, well, Todd Glass, we got news. Kathy, coming back with the thing with the 405. Um, <laughs> but I want to say this. She does the LA traffic for us. I think it's a good, sh I want to do this right now. So okay. next in line is who's, Bourbon and Branch is, you know how there's places that produce and, and uh, curate comedy shows yes. all over? Yeah. But they have a name, but they could move venues here and there, but it's still, it's next in line right. that's presenting me at Bourbon and Branch. They okay. present comedy all over Philadelphia. Okay. But they're presenting me. So I want to give, you know, Betty Smithson. I can't say that word. Say it. Betty Smithson. What's it word? Smithsonian? 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 Yes. Yeah, yeah. So Betty, uh, she's uh, that's she's her last one. name is Smithsonian. I know, not a great name. Yeah, it's awesome. That's a really good name. And you're gonna uh, uh, give some love to your Uber driver, Meredith, over there. Oh, uh, <laughs> Meredith. Well, she's great. She came over here. You know, but I was gonna just get a pile of dog hair and rub all over my jacket, but you know, I got it. I got it all done. <laughs> I'm just kidding. She was telling me about her kids. <laughs> you know when people tell you cute stories about your kids, but then you're like, I don't know. I think there might be some intervention. She goes, Oh, mad you hit that uh, John over the head with a shot. And then he's like, ah! I said, Matthew, you can't do that. You know, I hate you. And then Matthew tells his brother, I hate you. I go, you guys don't hate each other. You're brothers. I go, oh, yeah. People just always hit people over the head with a shovel. <laughs> and then, I, why would I make this up? And by the way, I get that you're going to think I'm making it up. On the way here, she goes, do you mind if I pull behind this alley? I have to buy some drugs. Some 
Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm Meredith? like, do it. Wow. Yeah, okay. I'm like, do whatever you want, that, that, but that I don't know. That seems made up. We know Meredith is not that way. <laughs> okay, well, yeah. well I'm whatever. telling you. Okay, listen. Enough with that. Hold on, hold on. Let's... I don't mean to, to, to run things, but just before we're... <laughs> wait, wait a second. Oh, really? you, 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 it's, for people who don't know, you, you'll sometimes, uh, you'll give us the honor of testing new material for you. Is that okay? It's absolutely oh, yeah. fine. Okay, so, and we also, when, we, when we're ramping up, can I just plug the crowdsource? It's not even up yet, but I want to talk about that. Did you see the video? Uh, which one? The one with the show that's like, oh, this is the show. It's a four-minute video. Well, it's yeah. on my YouTube page. Yeah. Okay. Maybe we could show a little visual of sure. it. Sure. Oh. It's, uh, it's, it's on my website, and it says, Todd Glass, the event of a lifetime. I don't know if you could show it well, up we'll there. We'll get it, yeah. But anyway, so here's some things. I come prepared. Yeah, I come yeah, you prepared. Do. Okay, you do. so here, there's a few little things. I don't mean... Is that written on the back of a Kmart receipt? What's going on over How there? How dare you? No, it's uh, <laughs> he's City Hydration. He's Target. I'm going there right afterwards. Oh, it's a P, it says PC notes. Oh, okay. Podcast oh, okay. notes. Okay. Okay. Um, okay, so listen. Um, <clears throat> you got to be careful. Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> What? No, just... You like when I go right into <laughs> yeah. it? Yeah, okay. Can I get a round of applause? Yeah. yeah. yeah you know, sure. it's so funny, Steve, you point that out. Whenever you try to go into your material and, you, and they know you have to do it, you go, okay. You're like, you're on stage or something. Um, well, you got to be careful when you get on planes. And I've slipped and done this too, where you go, oh, the seats are getting smaller. Yeah. Because it could mean... I mean, I'm sure they're getting a little smaller maybe, but I have a feeling, <laughs> no, it's as we get bigger. Yeah. Because then you... I don't want to start saying it now because then it depends how big you are. It depends how small you think they're getting. You might go, oh, I think they're getting a little smaller. There's somebody else, maybe a little bigger. They're like, oh, my God, they're teeny. <laughs> yeah. They're the teeniest little things. I remember they used to be big. Now they're so you just want to like, you know. And my doctor, I have a, my doctor's crazy. Um, <laughs> Dr. Vinny <laughs> Boombots. Dr. Vinny <laughs> Boombots. <laughs> Me and my friends have a running joke with Rodney's doctor. Right, he yeah. used to go, wait. <laughs> Vinny Boombot, that's your doctor, Todd? That was Roddy Dangerfield's doctor, his fake doctor in his right. routine. You didn't go to Dr. Vinny Boombot's. I go, I don't know if Rodney, if Rodney talks about him, but maybe a lot of people go to him. I did see Jerry Seinfeld in the waiting room once. So maybe a lot of, you know, uh, people in the entertainment business yeah. use him. Sure. Um, okay, so did you ever, like, I, I work, I, I run every day. I'm not you telling do. you that to brag, but, I, but I'm not, like, I run an hour and a half every single day. But then... And I'm not exaggerating. Like, I mean this. I don't mean, oh, oh, it's not this bad, but you ever drop your phone in the car or try to plug something in behind the bed? You're <laughs> bending over instead of moving the bed. You come up for air, you're like, holy, <laughs> oh my God, yeah. I'm done for the day. Uh -huh. yeah. And yeah. I'm like, this is not me going, well, you're a little tired, you're exaggerating it. I'm like, what is that? Like when you used to walk up a flight of mall stairs. Yeah. And you're like, holy jeez, woo! I'm like, so I don't, I don't know what that. The point of that is that the, don't work out. <laughs> <laughs> Doctor, Mr. because Rogers, it won't help. It won't help. It right? won't help. Yeah, it yeah. doesn't help. Mr. Rogers said, if it's mentionable, it's manageable. Okay. So I, I like that. Words you think that's by. on big things, and it can be on things, yeah. emotional things like that, of course. But even on the littlest things, like I finally asked a friend, I go. It, I, he asked me, he goes, is your dentist always telling you that there's so much work to be done in your mouth? Like your your teeth are barely hanging in, your gums all need to be replaced, everything. <laughs> I'm like, yes. I'm like, now is it, it's not only me. I'm like, for, they're like the biggest up salesman in the world. They look in your mouth, oh, Jesus. And they, your gums are just, go, your gums are gone, Todd. They're gone, they're rotting, your teeth are, all, yeah, what do you use, chiclets? Did you put a chiclet in there? Your, your gums are gone, you need new gums, you need new teeth, you need you need about $100,000 worth of work. And by the way, good news, the cleaning is covered by your insurance. So that's really great. And then she takes like a wet nap, puts it around her finger, and then she goes in and cleans my teeth. Right. And I go, oh, isn't it the type where they scrape that off? She goes, oh no, the insurance doesn't pay that. But you, all, you don't have much time left with with your teeth anyway, you know? <laughs> um, drinking water. Now, you've, do you guys hydrate? Yeah, yeah, I drink water sometimes. Two well, things. You can never drink enough. People that want... I told my sister, sometimes I lie. She goes, oh, Todd, you got to drink a lot of water. I go, I do, I do. She goes, how much do you drink? I go, and I'm like, okay, I better start lying right now. I go, oh, like, you know those things? About two of those a day, which it's not that much, but I do that to have her go, oh, good. She goes, you need, need more. I'm like, how much do I need? She goes, you got to go to a reservoir with a straw. <laughs> you just drink it all down. And my mom's husband, Steve, I hope he's not listening. I, I go, Steve, just admit you don't drink water. Why won't you drink water? Like, I think it's affecting him. He goes, well, and then he says things. I am not making this up. Well, you know, coffee counts as water now. I'm like, oh, you know, like, oh, you know, there's a lot of water in syrup. 
<laughs> that's what you know. That's what my accountant no, said. You, everything you're saying is true because, yeah. uh, like, the notion of drinking straight. And I drink my main drink is water all the time. I, the notion of drinking water the way I do it now, and I drink a lot, was alien to me. It'd be iced tea. It'd be and yeah. I would think that same thing. That's well, the there's water. water in this. It's juice. My right, mom right. used to go. It's juice. It's a can. Right. A can yeah. of juice. <laughs> yeah, you, you can't. You gotta. You know, oh, there's a, there's a lot of water. He goes. You know. You know, Todd. I, a friend of mine told me there's a lot of. Moisture and gummy bears. <laughs> All right, Steve, please uh, don't drink water. Please. I, I, I drank so much water. I was drinking so much water that I had a what they call a vasovagal reaction on the air. I was coughing. What? And I passed out. They took me to Lankenau. And the doctors over there said I was drinking too much water. I was flushing potassium out of my system. Wait, how much? Okay, I'm not even joking now. So I how do you tell the listening audience what that is? So this is a... <laughs> yeah, this is 50 uh, fluid ounces. So it's 1.5 liters. Okay. So I drink about... Three of these a day, three to four. Me, yeah. three a day for me. Yeah. So you're saying that's too much, or so, were you no, drinking well, even more? You, I was drinking. You know, you have to make sure because you will flush stuff out of your system. That's what they told me. He's down to three liters a day. Yeah, it used to be like, thirty. <laughs> wow. Well, you know, I used to go to a reservoir with a straw. Fudge is good for you too, and nobody talks about <laughs> that. <laughs> you're right. Did you ever have a friend that tries to make their bad qualities good, like they cuten it up a little? You know, they're like, yeah. Oh, you know me. I'm not a listener. <laughs> no, that's not a good quality. You can't just, you know, or like when they had, don't talk to me till I've had my coffee. I'm always like, yes. no, get help. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that, I think you have a chemical imbalance and you can't just put it on a mug and go, come on, it's cute. It's on my mug. It's not an imbalance. Oh, really? You know what? I'm going to start. I'm going to show up to that person's house with a mug that goes, oh, don't talk to me. I've had uh, two Vicodin and some loose pills I found at other people's houses. <laughs> Whatever it is, you know. Oh, don't talk to me till I've had a little nose candy and you know and six <laughs> beers you know <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know. <laughs> you know I'll you. hey speaking of nose candy and six beers can we talk about uh the golden globes yes yes yeah. how about that uh, how uh, you were on tv a lot which was really cool <laughs> there's to a see. story behind it. well that's what i want to know there's a story behind it <laughs> so i got called last minute i've never been to anything like that they've introduced this category for for, 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 for uh, comedians. comedians right right and uh so i uh, jim gaffigan invited me to go with him and i think you were all like this sometimes i think a lot of people are like this you just don't want to go to anything you right. know you're yeah. like oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <You> know, <laughs> if i don't want to go i just want to be invited that's yeah. it or you want to go where right exactly right yeah. <laughs> or you want to go where you're so you know you're, there's going to be people that are haven't seen in a while it might be overwhelming right you know it might be overwhelming i went of course i went and uh it was so much fun it seems to be the most fun of the award it's, shows because of the of the kind of restaurant layout exactly and there's yeah. drinks and there's food and you know i sat i don't i don't know a lot of things like you know some people go oh that's blah 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 they produce this and i i so we go we sit I've heard of this show, Ted La Ted Lazo. Ted Lazo's right? oh, yeah. great. Right. Of course, I've heard of that yeah. show. And you know, when a show you haven't seen it yet, but you know, people you respect like it, so you know it's a good show. Yeah. But I, but I was at that table, but I didn't really know anybody. So, but I do know John Hamm because yeah. he is he on that show by the no, way. No, no, he just sat at the table. Okay, yeah. but it was mostly Ted Lasso people, and they were all so friendly, and they're like reaching over the table, hi, how you doing? And I relaxed a little. Do you know? Do you know Brett Golsing? No. Okay. No, I know um, uh, uh, Jason, Sudeikis, Jason Sudeikis a teeny bit. Okay. But but, but but everybody was very friendly. And then um, they it relaxed me when one of the producers go, "Hey, my name's I forget his name, but he goes, "Hey, I'm, you know, he, I like your stand up." And he had a, a joke I used to do a long huh. time ago, and that relaxed me. And then John Hamm, I'm very comfortable with oddly because he's been hanging around the comedy scene for years, like before he was John Hamm. Really? Right? He would always be like at the UCB or the M bar. He just liked comedy and was very funny himself. He's really good buddies with uh, Doug Benson. He shows up on on Benson's right, podcast right, all right. the time. Yeah, and he's yeah. a huge comedy and he's very funny he's, in his own right. He's, he's very got funny. A, and he's, he's got a, a, a sitcom, a, a, an animated uh, sitcom com comedy show. It's on Sunday nights on Fox. He plays this grumpled, uh, rumpled private detective. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, What's yeah. the name of the show? I forget the name of it. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, John, it was uh, it was fun. Oh, so here's what happened. So and then and like I'm a little nervous, but I see Sarah Silverman's at the next table. I knew she was going to be there, so we like touched hands. We're like, okay. And then my table, they were. It was like being at the best wedding in the world. Like everybody was funny. That's great. You know, I only stood when they stood. Like if somebody else won, I'm like, oh, maybe they don't like that person. I'm like, if anybody stood at my table, I stood. So I go, I go. 
I go, Sarah, watch. I go, I'm going to get, get, give the reaction I know they want. Not over the top. And, I, and I, so I start just doing it as a joke. And they're, they see me like, yeah. you know, just really turning it up a little. Not, in, not so much where they, the camera guy will go, no, this guy's, what's he doing? He's faking it. Just where it looked real. So I started doing that. I'm like applauding, looking real happy, you know, like smiling and really, you know. And then, <laughs> then... The, my phone, I have it at the table, starts, goes, oh, you're getting a lot of air time. I'm like, wait, is this working? <laughs> <laughs> and then it comes in again, you know, my, and then Sarah goes, why is, and I think there's a camera around our table a lot because yeah. there's a lot of people there that, so they plant the camera when that, when that section, you know, when that award yeah. comes up. And the lasso crew Which is, she goes, yeah. they're like mounted a camera on you, <laughs> but I have a feeling there's not getting the reactions they want from a lot of people. <laughs> so they're like, uh, go back to that, just go put a camera, he's giving us what we want. So every time I'm like, oh, or I would do this thing where when somebody <laughs> went up, I would um, like like it's my significant other or it's my. Oh yeah. Can, can so you, I would can go you like give this, us the best? Yeah, hands, yeah. Both hands to heart and go, I love you. And I would lip, I love you. <laughs> I would go, I love you. They showed that one. Like, oh I love you. And, so then every, I mean, everybody was, I was so nervous and then very comfortable. Yeah. Once I'm comfortable. So Sarah's like, do more, do more. Like so, so then I the only lunatic thing I did, like a, like a crazy person, when Oprah went up, I yeah. waved to her like a lunatic would wave to somebody. Like not, she didn't see me. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, nobody yeah, yeah. saw me. So I was just like this, like waving back and forth really fast. <laughs> Oprah, look at me, Oprah. Oh my god. But um, it was uh, and, and <clears throat> you know, speaking of my two favorite parts of the night were I went to the after. I didn't want to go to the after parties, but I did and ended up having just a really good time. Which which after party did you go to? Uh, the net Netflix one. Oh, at, it's just at supposed to be huge. Yeah, and wow. it was perfect. Like you know when it, when there's food and it's spread out and there's sofas in one room and just they got it's just a great hang. And um, my my favorite thing somebody going. Oh my God, I love your TikToks. I'm like, it made my night. <laughs> he goes, I don't want to bother you though. I go, you kidding me? Two hours later, the guy's like, oh, I can't get away from you. <laughs> I'm like, you know, that's a TikTok. I go, well, sometimes it comes to me in the middle of the night, but did you see the TikTok where I'm on top of the building and the thing? Well, the funny thing with TikToks, I mean, I didn't used to do TikToks. I mean, when Twitter came along, nobody wanted to do it. The guy's like, I, I got to go. Next time. Nice meeting you. Oh, you're so interesting. Anyway, yeah, thanks a lot. You make sure the next time we're out, I bump into you. We want to talk more TikToks. All right, see you later, Todd. Start the car. Oh, he's coming back. Theater of the mind. By the way, Todd. Exit like that. I get every ounce of seconds I can get in here. Hold and, it. Oh, one second. Todd Glass playing Bourbon and Branch tonight and tomorrow and Friday and Saturday. Just want to mention that. Otherwise, I won't fit it and in And Sunday. You know and what? Sunday. We're wrapping up. No, no, not wrapping okay, up. No. I just want to fit it in Can there. Can I so say people this? Because I want to yeah. be, I want to leave here and get in the car. City hydration. What did you say? <laughs> oh, city hydration. I can't, oh, they're going to make me feel better. I'm a little tired. City, <laughs> Are you doing one your, of the you, suburbs now? You're doing IVs. your IV drip? Yeah. I do you, the whole thing. You still I do, do this? I go on stage with two drip bags in my arms. So I have <laughs> maximum energy. They show up from uh, city hydration and then they hook me up and they. And then they, uh, I don't know. I Abby actually think, did that. Didn't you do it? Yes, finally, and of Abby? course, I got the side effect that nobody ever gets from it because that's yeah. what happens with me. But I, she I got just, syphilis. No, I got like uh, <laughs> my my vein got like super hard, and I guess it maybe oh, was infected. Kathy, they don't or, wink don't. at me when you say that. I know what's going on here, and you know <laughs> no, my situation. I didn't go there. You know, I like the. <laughs> I didn't go there. I didn't I go know, to I know, city I'm just hydration. Yeah, I went elsewhere. Oh, yeah. Well, the other place, if you don't go to city hydration, now, I'm not just saying this guy. I have no affiliation with them, honestly. But the, the, I heard, not through really? not through city hydration, they would never say anything like that, <laughs> that all the other places, not most of them, all of them, they have filthy, dirty needles that they find <laughs> in the ground. <laughs> oh, no, no, that's just what I heard. That they would say that. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So here, they would never say that. Filthy, I want Betty needle. to be proud of me. Here are the shows we have tickets for. I'll make okay. it real quick. Only, we don't have to plug this you, again. Go ahead. Chip Chantry and Blake Wexler, thank you for opening the shows. So we have uh, Thursday, we have uh, tickets for the 9. First one sold out. Friday and Saturday, there's only tickets for the 1030. Again, small, wonderful, small. cool, hip venue, 70, 70 people. people. You're going to see it's, Todd up it's close It's crazy. Personal. It's set up. You know, they let me do whatever I want. When you get upstairs, the minute you get upstairs, it's dark. Yeah. No, can't, you know, there's, there's candles along the bar. You go into the room. It's just very, 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 everyone's wearing black shirts and ties. Like, it's going to wow. be, it, it, looks, it looks really cool. And then Sunday, we added two shows. Okay. So Sunday, there's, uh, there's shows. So there you go, Mary. I hope you think I did a good job. Thank you, <laughs> um, Brad. How did you pick the 
Bourbon and Branch? Well, I went, I came home for the holiday. Oh, and remind me to tell you the best, best part of leaving the Golden Globes. Okay. 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 I came home for the holiday and I wanted to try something like a small room where I could do a ton of shows. And I went over there and I saw the venue. And I was like, oh, you know me, I, I picture my head. Oh, we could do this. We could put little cocktail tables in. Sure. I'm like, yeah, let's, uh, they thought it would be too small. They wanted me to do this other room. I'm like, no, I want to do this room. Yeah. So, uh. I went and just thought this is going to be a you know good place to see a show, and I'm. I you just really figure you do you do more shows than you normally more do. More shows only because I mean I try to say that so I don't look crazy like oh 13 shows yeah but the room holds 70 people so I'm I'm aware of that but a lot of them sold out like you know like you know like a month and a half ago so it's 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 uh, fun. Oh, well, it's awesome. So yeah. they're, they're leaving the Golden Globes. You're leaving the Golden Globes. So anyway, <clears throat> testing testing. <laughs> um. I'm leaving. It's just a wonderful night. I'm a big I think you should leave fan. Right. I get nervous. Like everybody, you know, when you see someone, I don't get starstruck. I get talent struck. Ah. I like to say it that way. If I see, like if I see the Kardashians, who cares? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'll stare. <laughs> um, but, uh, but, but I get talent struck. So I see <sighs> Tim Robinson. I, he knows that I've thrown a lot of love to that show on, on social media. And I think, I, I know we know who each other are. Because Rory Scoville golfs with him. But we've never met. I don't know him that well. It's still a little uncomfortable. So I see him coming down. I see him coming down the like a hallway and at the party. And I just I I just so I think up. you should leave. I go, I think you which should is, leave. Which is a which is a great show. Do you know that happened? Emmy a winning uh, show, yeah. I think you should okay, I'll I'll go in order here. Yeah. So I just put my arms out yeah. and I go, I'm not ending this night without a hug. Comes in. Gives me a great big hug, just a good, good hug. And then he goes, his when I go mine. We didn't have to go, you know, like, you know, talk yeah. or like yeah, be a yeah. little nervous. But I was on stage uh, at a comedy club at, uh, in, it doesn't, Bloomington, the comedy attic. And it was a genuine moment. And I go, I said something to the sound guy. I go, I go, you're going to, I go, don't embarrass me. I go, don't embarrass me. And his name is Barry, the yeah. sound man. I go, don't embarrass me, Barry. I go, What's that from? Like on stage. I'm like, yeah. and no one answers. I go, what's that? Wait, wait, don't embarrass me, Barry. <laughs> and I go, what's that from? Like, And then somebody goes, I think you should leave. <laughs> So they're telling me oh, this. So yeah. I just dropped the mic and walked out the door. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, ah, oh, that's a good promo for them. But anyway. Oh, okay. nah. <laughs> anyway. But uh, yeah, drinking water, drop it, new material. We have make two minutes. Good we got two minutes? Two minutes. All right, let's talk about the crowdsource. Okay. okay. Wow, there's so much to cover. Uh, okay, two minutes. Here we go. Can I get bum, 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 as we go in for the plug fest here? Right. Um, uh, um, you want oh, a fanfare? Uh, what? Yes. Oh, by the way, uh, 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 Devin, Devin and Mary play Just at a place in Collegeville, and the name of their uh, their name of their dueling piano thing is Love Me Duel. Pretty cool name. Are you, are you yeah. covered? Are you covered for musicians now? Are you? Yes, are you I'm covered? only using Devin because I've been trying to tour. You know, you know how I want to do this show in New York. Yes, but um, it's uh, it, it everything takes longer than you think. But that's still the goal to do a tour. All right, that's what the crowdsource is for. Yeah. So thank you, Devin. Love Me Duel tattoo. I got to finish my tattoo next in line. Thank you. So hey, hydration. Sir, do your in memoriam section too. My memoriam. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta do it all. I think. Oh, I know I'm gonna get in the car. Hold on, give me 30 more. I got 30 more seconds. Thank you, Steve. <laughs> Thank I'm you. For, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm getting that? a little nervous. Come on. So, uh, yeah. It says shows, it right on his mic stand. What? I know. On his mic, uh, that's not really a stand. <laughs> to try to divert the mistake I made, I correct you. Yeah. Well, it's more of an arm <laughs> from the uh, thing, not a stand. We're getting a stand. What's wrong? <laughs> All right. Can't um, he see? I think we got it. Next in line, bourbon right. and branch. Eat downstairs, because upstairs there's only drinks in the showroom. All right. And there we go. Does anyone have a pickup truck that they could return <laughs> the chairs that my friend Bucky uh, gave us for the room? Email me at Todd Glass Comedy. <laughs> Monday they need to be picked up and brought to the suburbs. <laughs> Thank you. Bucky, I wish I was lying. Bucky's your chair guy? Bucky Scott uh, runs... Oh, I better not say, because I don't think he did it on the... Uh, on the up and up. He broke into Sorry, he does, his name's not Bucky. Of course, I don't use his real name. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Bourbon uh, and Branch. Just uh, nothing yeah. but love. Oh, Bourbon and Branch or ToddGlass.com to get the info and we'll post it on WMMR.com. And here, here's your official, your official music on the way you, out. You don't so. have your headphones on so you can't hear. Buddy. All right, we love you. Todd love Glass, you. guys, Yay! get your tickets now Thank before you. they are all gone. We got to take a break. When we come back, uh, Alan Tudyk will be on the show, and our buddy Joe Matarese is stopping Joe Matarese, yeah. I thought he passed away. Someone <laughs> told me he definitely passed away. <laughs> we'll be back in a moment. 
Preston and Steve. Denise. Hi. Hi, Denise. You're the 25th caller. Yeah. You are a winner. And we are going to give you tickets to go to the show September 9th. How about that? I am very, very, very excited. <laughs> That's phenomenal. How many times have you had a chance to see Pearl Jam? Um... I go back to when they played at J.C. Dobbs. Wow. wow. You're a long-term fan. Damn. I'm 60 years old. I've been seeing, I, I've seen them. I saw them. I saw Nirvana at J.C. Dobbs. Yep. I'm you're old. The, you're, no, you're the real deal is what you are. That's, it's, what was that show like, may I ask? I don't know if I've ever had a chance to talk to somebody. You hear about how legendary that was when they played there. I was home and my friend called me and said, you want to go see this band from Seattle? Yeah. It's this grunge music, and I was like, "Yeah, I'll go." And it was, it was awesome. It was awesome. Fantastic, awesome. All right, see if they recognize you, Denise. You're going to the show. Congratulations! Thanks <laughs> Thank for calling you. in. Thank you so much. All right, Woo! you got it. Wow. Wait a second. Is that, is that Denise? That is, yeah. yeah. Been, how long has it been? <laughs> uh, so, congratulations. What day are we on now of day ten? Do we know? Because oh, I, 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 Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Monday Tuesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday. day six. All right. Jimmy. So we got a few more, <laughs> Jimmy. Get yourself ready because we're going to give away more Jimmy. tickets tomorrow morning. <laughs> We will let you know when, what the song is and when it's going to play. It's MMR's Pearl Jam, 10 Days of Pearl Jam. Uh, we're going to take a look at traffic, see what's happening. Uh, Jimmy, what you got for us? <laughs> yeah, here we go. 95 Jimmy. southbound in Wilmington, <laughs> Delaware at 4th Street. We've got an accident blocking the right lane. You're jammed back to Concord Pike. 422 westbound between Sanatoga and M Arm & Hammer Boulevard. Right lane closed with construction. New Jersey Turnpike northbound between 206 and 195. Right lane closed with construction. Construction Route 70 eastbound. We've got a water main break. Right lane has been closed all morning between Westgate Drive and 295. This traffic report brought to you by Whole Foods Market. Save on premium seafood at Whole Foods Market. Get 20% off sustainable wild-caught halibut fillets with Prime through February 27th. While supplies last, shop in-store or online. Terms apply. And that's your traffic on 93.3 WMMR. Thank you very much, Kathy. Uh, we're going to get our next guest on in just a second. We're getting him oh. lined up. Yo. You know, can I do a shout out real quick yeah, yeah. Uh, while we wait. Uh, I got an sure. email from a gentleman named David Bauer, and uh, he was asking for recommendations for one of my favorite bands ever. <laughs> I'm sorry, my favorite band ever. But anyway, uh, he asked for a, 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 a shout out for his boss, Jeff. Huh. Found out that his boss, Jeff, is a huge fish fan after recognizing one of the songs playing in their store, uh, and their store is a company called Tomlinson's out of Austin, Texas. So, Austin, Texas? this is a shout out to uh, Austin, Texas, Jeff and David Bauer. Austin? Yeah. Austin, Massachusetts. Massachusetts. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> um, by the way, I want to reiterate an announcement that we had a little earlier this morning. We are going to have a leap day birthday party in our studio. It's been a long, long time since we've done this. The birthday only comes around once every four years. It's, it's a it's a cruel injustice that yep. you get. You're, you're boned out of so many birthdays. Yep. So if your birthday is February 29th, uh, we have a few slots to be one of our invited guests that morning, and we're going to do all the birthday party trappings for kids, Yeah, which is what we did years ago. So if you have a birthday on February 29th, take a look at the contest page, WMMR.com, and you will... Uh, get yourself entered to join us uh, for a spot that morning here in our studio, which would be a pretty sweet deal. Mm -hmm. Last time we had, uh, oh, we had characters and all kinds of things. I, so yeah. We'll see. What's... Whatever makes a perfect kids party, you're going to get it. Yeah. All right. Our next guest is ready to go. And uh, season three of a show, Resident Alien, uh, can be found. Well, the you, you'll find it streaming on, uh, or you'll find it on Sci-Fi and then streaming the next day on Peacock. But the first two seasons now you can catch on Netflix. So that's a sure sign of a great product it's, because it's available all over the place. It's a wonderful show. It really is. Uh, we would like to welcome uh, this gentleman. Please give some love to Alan Tudyk hey! this morning on the program. Alan, welcome, sir. Hey. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Congratulations. A third season. When, when you guys first got going on uh, Resident Alien, and I would imagine, and, and you've been in so many projects throughout your career, do you ever really know if something's going to stick or not until you throw it out there to the public? No. I don't. I, you have an inkling. You, know, you, you can only look to what you can control, and, and we, were, we really liked our show, the, the, the stories we were telling, but there's so many other big, important things that make a hit show. Mm. Some of it is just luck. So you you just 
you just hope it all works out. And and this one, yeah, we've because of the pandemic and then the strike, we've we've actually <laughs> although we're on season three, yeah. Now, We've been doing it for almost six years. Wow. It, it does. It seems like, yeah, it seems yeah. like an eternal show because, um, I actually a good portion of the the second season, I, you know, I kind of had to go back and 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 go through, uh, but um, yeah, it's but the fan base has remained there and loyal, and uh, and this is a good way for people to take a, a jump. And there's not you know it's not twenty five thousand episodes. You can get up to speed quickly. Yeah. And Alan, I have to say, you know, uh, when I first experienced the show, I didn't realize that it, it, it in the it falls more in the dramedy sort of realm there's there's yeah. some serious emotional stuff uh explain the conceit of the show for people who aren't familiar what uh with what resident alien is about so i'm an alien who was supposed to come down to earth and just drop a bomb uh and kill all of humanity <laughs> while saving the earth it would just kill all humans but i cracked and i had no plan of being here i didn't i really don't know how humans behave or i didn't study uh, because I was just going to kill them all. <laughs> and after crashing, I take over an identity, and I'm sort of learning as I go. Uh, I get pulled into a small town uh, crime. There was a, a the doctor was killed, and I get pulled in as the new doctor. And so we're sort of solving a crime season one about who killed the doctor while I'm trying to figure out how to be a human. And there's a little boy who can see me as an alien, and I have to figure out how to kill him <laughs> so that is the kid is the kid is great by the way the 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 um what i love also and, and you do something with the show that is that this is a nuance that sometimes eludes other shows you're learning just simply in the beginning stages the physicality of of how to how to move as a human how to brush your teeth how to do mm -hmm. all those right. things that are just kind of glossed over and and you go through painstaking learning process which is simultaneously touching and hilarious yeah, it's fun. You know, yeah, he his first chicken he eats, he eats from the <laughs> breastbone down. <laughs> oh my god. And that was a disgusting day on set. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, how, he doesn't know anything. He, it, it begs the question because it seems there's a fair amount of obviously we know you your 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 comedic chops are you know, uh, from Firefly and, and uh, the characters you played and, uh, and Dodgeball, you know, obviously you have got that ability, your improvisational ability. How much do you improv and how much of what you improv ends up in a final episode? In this one, it's a, it's a, it's a lot. Ah. Uh, it depends on who you're, uh, who you're working with. Uh, but uh, Christopher Sheridan, who created the show off of a, a, a comic book, he, he comes from Family Guy. He wrote for Family Guy for 20 years, so he's used to writers' pitch rooms and, and really likes the idea of if somebody's got a good idea, let's go with it. And uh, so we we have Edie Patterson this season who's on Righteous Gemstones. She's ah. her sister in Righteous Gemstones. Yeah. She's, she's hilarious, and her and I uh, had a... We have one. We have one thing. She's another alien. I fall in love with her. And there was a scene where it says they kiss, and that's that was all that was there. That kiss was <laughs> epic. It ended up she was spitting food in my mouth. It was, uh, <laughs> it was I, insane. I love that. So you have Linda Hamilton, who is a General McAllister, who was a nemesis. But as we learn now. Um, you you guys are going to have sort of a, a, an uneasy alliance. Explain what we can anticipate. Well, she is sort of the leader of the men in black, as the kids uh, in the show call her. Um, she, and she's not to be trusted. She can't be trusted. She's <laughs> with the government. Come on. <laughs> those black ops people. And she hates, she spent her life trying to find aliens and kill them. And now... Uh, there's a, another alien race on Earth that we're teaming up to um, battle, and I, she, can, she just can't be trusted. She can't be trusted, and and I can't be trusted either. I'm going behind her back. I don't go into work ever. I'm skipping <laughs> because I'm bored with it, and I'm hungry and like pizza. I don't like working with people. Right. So, you, you love um, law and order. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love Law and Order. I'd rather be home just doing a Law and Order marathon than working with a bunch of government stooges in an underground bunker. No, it's you know? great. Um, 
Alan, you have you have done so much in your career. We could spend a couple of hours talking to you. We only have ten minutes, so yeah. I, if you don't mind, I want to ask about a couple other things real quick because not sure. that long ago, for the first time uh, in the morning, it just came on. I started watching. I had never seen the movie Forty Two. Uh, you obviously have done a lot of comedy in your time. That was not comedic. You, your character, you talk about you know getting food spit in your mouth and doing some uncomfortable things as an actor. The the the, the things you had to say in that movie had to have been really difficult for you to perform. Yeah, it was. Uh, so yeah, I played uh, Ben Chapman, who was a real guy. Um, it it was Chadwick Boseman, um, uh, and. He, Jackie Robinson's the story right. of Jackie Robinson who yeah. wore the number 42 and whenever they played uh, together he would stand out my character Ben who was the manager would, or the coach would stand out and yell racial slurs right. at him just the most and, horrible and they, tirade yeah and they wrote him down I mean he was saying this stuff and there were journalists behind him and at the time wow. there was nothing to hide it was just all white out in the open and so they just wrote it down Word for word, this is what he said, and it's the most awful. Wow. It was terrible. I was, in a, I mean, it was difficult. And Chadwick was amazing. He gave me a big hug after it was all done. Huh. Well, um, I mean, he, for for it to matter as much as it matters and be as as an incredible uh, a performance as it is, you have to be on your game to do that. Because if there if there was any bit of m misplaying that, it, it would be disastrous. But you were you were surgical yep. because it, you know in an unenviable role. Um, I have to ask you, yeah. with all your fandom, you have obviously Firefly and Ser Serenity, uh, Rogue One. Yeah. Uh, you, you, uh, who who represents the most passionate fan base when you're out uh, as a civilian walking on the street? Uh, who approaches you first? Who do you know uh, of those groups is going to be the first to get to you? Uh, I get a lot of yars and gars <laughs> for dodgeball from a yeah. distance because that's an easy... <laughs> You can just lob that All right the crowd, um, but uh, Firefly was a TV show that only did 14 episodes back in 2003 on Fox, and they got a movie made. The fans got a movie made, and those are fans that will come up and say, "Hey, I'm on board with Firefly," <laughs> and uh, they're they're the ones that that I'm most connected with. I, I I've met the most of them, so I, I, they are they are the. I'd the have fans. to say if I recognize you, I'd yell out, "Hey, it's the Duke of Weaseltown." <laughs> Uh -huh. <laughs> Wesselton. Wesselton, <laughs> of course. Frozen. Uh, but but I would imagine that this group of uh, of uh, resident alien, that's got to be growing as well, too, and people recognizing you from the show because you've yeah. got... Because yeah. it's now on Netflix. The first two seasons are now on Netflix, and you can watch, catch up there. But we have season three coming out right now as well. And uh, so... New episodes are out now. You can see the last, the first two seasons. It's just right there in the top ten. I mean, <laughs> no, we, 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 I, it, we, really, it is a solid show. We encourage everyone to get caught up. Very easy to do, easily binged, and uh, and and we also know that there's a method to the madness. You know, if you're going by the original source material, there's a plan to everything. So we're looking forward to it. Yes, wonderful, excellent, wonderful. Alan. Great to speak to you. Hopefully, we'll see you in Philly sometime. Thank you so much, Alan Tudyk, guys. I love Philly. We yeah. love you. <laughs> All right, take care, my man. Good luck with everything. Uh, it is Resident Alien Wednesdays, 10 p.m. on Sci-Fi. He's great, man. He is he's terrific. His it, uh, like we have his IMDb. It's like a it's like a novel. Yeah, he's just been in so many movies, and he's voiced like you were saying, Steve, a gazillion. Uh, Disney character. I think for like six, seven years straight, he's been in every Disney movie. And Kanto yeah. and Moana yeah. and all that stuff. And I wow. think he's going to be part of the uh, the live action. Oh, wow. Yeah. Awesome. That Ben Chapman character, man, in, in oh 42. I mean, he was the manager of the Phillies. <laughs> yeah. And he, I mean, he just was a reprehensible human being. And the way the Tudyk portrayed that character was really impressive. I told Nick about it. It was just recently. It was like a month ago. I saw the movie for the first time and I came in because I know what a baseball fan Nick is. And I'm like, I saw this and I'm like, I go, Alan Tudyk's character. I'm like, I it just... It boggles the mind he, how horrible this dialogue they had him throwing. Well, out. I liken oh it my to this. God, it was great. I like, mean, his performance is incredible. When you ha to have things work like in the courtroom, you have to have a vigorous defense team. Oh, most definitely. So you've got to have someone because if you softball that character, yeah, uh, no pun intended, you're gonna, but you it, know, it's gonna be more damage. It was just wild to hear that dialogue. Yeah, I yeah, hadn't heard right. dialogue like that in a long, 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 long time. I mean, and both you and I come from snuff films. And yeah, here, you know, people see us doing this now. Yeah, they don't. They, they can't even imagine. They don't have the context. Yeah, yeah. Uh, our next guest is here.
We love our guest. He is going to be playing uh, Saturday night is when the gig is at Cats JCC in Cherry Hill, New Jersey. Joe Mattery. Yeah! Joe. Ah, yeah. How you doing, See, man? See, now, now that I had to listen to Todd Glass <laughs> before me, this is like a comedy club. Like, you have, yeah. I have to follow another comedian. You don't usually have to do that on your show. Do you, do you, do you I've, we've seen you sort of in, in preparation when you're doing a show for us for the, uh, the camp out for hunger. You're very, you're, you're very dialed in, maybe even a little hyper. And when you're when you're when you're around, you, well, it's, but then you're a perfectionist, right? You, there was a particular light I remember, right, Preston? That was not quite. Yes. Yeah. You yes. bring up the flickering light <laughs> the every flickering. time I come on. It's, I just think that gives <laughs> every the, time it gives the audience a good <laughs> reference for what a comedic perfectionist you are. Well, I do a joke that, that I say if I was a superhero, my superhero name would be meticulous. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. love that. Yeah, and I have what a, a great idea. Yeah, I have an M on my chest. <laughs> I have a cape. I can fly. I can fly. But if there's some sort of crime scene happening, I don't really save anybody. You know, I, I fly in, I move a candle a quarter of an inch, and then I just fly away. <laughs> so the crime scene will be presentable. Yeah. Right? Oh. yeah, 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 yeah. That's why Todd Glass, who was on just before me here on your show and yeah. him and I are friends and I think I connect with him because we have a similar meticulousness yes. and as my dad sitting off in the Is wings here yeah, yeah, he has the same meticulousness oh okay now, all right I don't know if you guys are, you know, I, know, I know Preston has kids like my dad I still remember to this day when my son was first born we're just home with the baby and my dad and mom drive up from Cherry Hill to New York where I live now and as soon as my dad gets to our house, he goes, you got a lot of green marsh all over your uh, your garage. I'm like, do you want to hold your new grandson? <laughs> what? <laughs> He's laughing. Uh, oh, that's great. <laughs> you know how it manifests with me? It manifests that I put things at angles. Oh, I have to have... Angles. I have to have... Right angles. angles. Yeah, squared and, and like... Yeah. So I, I uh, you know, I, I will... Oh, if there's magazines that are loose, I will stack them up. You know, mm -hmm. that's my, my thing. Uh, well, well, I started doing this Italian tour in the last six months. Um, it's called 93.7%. It sounds like a radio station. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Italian yeah. comedy tour. And uh, <laughs> I started to realize a lot of my things, my idiosyncrasies, really fell into the Italian, you Zeitgeist? know. Yes. Yeah. The, like that meticulousness when I'm in front of an Italian crowd, they're all like pointing at each other. You're like, oh yeah. Because, you know, uh, <laughs> I always say if an Italian guy moves next to you where you live, you don't have to worry that he's going to run the house down. Like that guy's going to, he's going to shovel the street. I've seen guys, you ever seen a guy shovel <laughs> yes, the street? Yeah, no. yeah. I saw, uh, we had an Italian guy who lived across the street from us, and he used to shovel the street, like, as the snow was coming down. And I, the joke was, I go, you know there's a truck that comes by every yeah. once in a while yeah. and does it. What are you doing? Yeah, yeah. But that, that's kind of a... And it, definitely an Italian thing do Italians, is the meticulous. Do they keep a tidy yard? Uh, no. Super into their landscaping. Really? Large okay. trees, bushes. The mulch yeah. has to be perfect. Okay. Oh, my God. So my uh, Italian neighbor, he would get his mulch... Uh, from somewhere like he he stole his mulch is what I'm saying. He stole mulch. Yeah, <laughs> fell off a like, truck. Casey. It was no, it, it was in a parking lot, and they went with a truck and just shoveled it into the back of the truck. So the and, business had paid to yeah. get it there it was in a pile. He shows up with his own truck and takes some. I, but to be honest with you, when I see giant piles of Free mulch, mulch. Like that, or like when you see the giant piles yeah. of of uh, road salt. I'm like, man, you can just go there. Like nobody's guarding it. Yeah. You know, nobody's sitting there with a with a nightstick. You know, it, it's not an industry. It. You mulch yeah. guard. But so so, and this guy would do this all the yeah, time. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, hilarious. It's free. It's free. <laughs> uh, I wanted to ask about because I, I'm I'm a mutt. Uh, you know, I'm not Italian, but my my buddy, uh, he was the first time I'd ever seen this. But they had two kitchens in their house. Well, that's uh, common. That is common. The yes. Italians have the basement kitchen. Yes. yes. And then the other kitchen. Yes. Did you have two kitchens? or I See, I didn't grow up like that. We're the Metagons, as they call it. <laughs> Only Philly, Philly... I don't know if that's just a Philly what Italian. Is, what does that mean? Metagon is a Italian slang for American. Okay. A Metagon is someone who doesn't do the typical it's Italian things. Yeah. It's an insult. It's a slight. Yeah. So, you, know, so my, you, you don't not, wear the whites. You don't wear an Adidas sweatsuit right. to a wedding. What are you, a Metagon? <laughs> we all wear it. Uh, You're not right off the boat. You're yeah. not 100% legit. That's hilarious. Yeah. Because my, my friend growing up <laughs> was, was his Italian-Irish. Dad was Irish. No, dad was Italian. And they had that second 
kitchen in the in, in the in the basement, mm-hmm. and that was to me always seemed to be for overflow for overflow for um, like Christmas. And and big events. Mm-hmm. So, but it rarely got used except it was for okay, all hands on deck. We're making nine hundred pounds of lasagna. Well, I don't know. I, I, I mean, my dad grew up in Chester, and his mom, you know, who who died when I was pretty young. She died in her early eighties, and I can remember she had the second kitchen, <laughs> and there, that she would literally be down there with a pin, like a rolling pin. Yeah, <laughs> with the I, I think my dad could touch. I think she was rolling the pasta one by one, the spaghetti pieces. <laughs> <laughs> and like cutting them with, she had the cutter down there, that yeah. machine, wow. yeah. you know, and then she'd bring it all up. For some reason, I don't know why they couldn't do that in the kitchen. Why? He's yeah. looking at me like, I know he has so the it, answer. It's like but a prep kitchen? Probably. Was yeah. it a prep kitchen? There was yeah. a table down. It's, it's like where you would do laundry now. Yeah. You have a laundry table where you fold everything. They were putting food on that thing. Yeah, that's, that, 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 that was my friend. They had the, the kitchen downstairs, which yeah. was A, the prep kitchen, and B, the family eating kitchen. But if they had any sort of like party or formal event, then the upstairs kitchen would be would be turned over and, and, and used. They also had their own like meat slicer. You know, Ooh, that's yeah. a true Italian. I, I would love to have that, <laughs> where you're just cutting like uh-huh. capicola down there, or and as the t- they had a secret door in their closet where, when she would jar all of her sauces, uh-huh. that's where it would, all the sauces was was in this secret compartment in their. In well, their actually, they sound uh, hardcore. I'm telling Joe. you, man. If you uh, you go over there on Sunday afternoons for they dinner, make their own wine or anything. Oh, oh yeah, but that yeah. didn't happen until we were a little bit later on in life. But uh, right. is that is that you? You? I mean, no, we. We're ninety three point seven percent. Yeah, that two point three percent—that's the percent that made the wine. And yeah, the I mean, my friends used to tease me because I had the friends that had the mom and dad that grew up in South Philly. Right. And yeah. my mom kind of my mom grew up in Upper Darby. You know, she was a Delco girl. You yeah. Know? And uh, you know, she she always did the cook, but it was it was not to the level of like what my friends had seen. So they would rip on me. Right. They would be like, "What the heck is this? Was this sauce made in?" Did she buy this sauce made already? I'm like, yeah, we just bought it. You, what's wrong with that? Uh-huh. And they were just like, oh. Like they, they would just kill me. Oh uh, I remember my friend, like when when the Godfather came out and Serpico and all this stuff, and he, the, so suddenly the part of him that was Irish disappeared. And so like, you know, it's like I'd say, hey, we're going to go see Serpico. No, he says, no, no, no. It's Serpico. <laughs> and I'm like, shut up! Yeah. But it, it became, it became, you know what I'm saying? Like it became so in vogue that it was like suddenly he was yeah. from Naples. <laughs> yeah. I had a friend. Well, I went to high school in Cherry Hill. Yeah. I mean, the, the high, literally where I'm doing the show this Saturday at this JCC. It, they got this like, it's like a block big. This JCC. They have a theater in there that seats 500 people, and the high school I graduated from is right around the corner from there. And my whole life, I always was like, I wonder. Like, I would see like a, a sign saying Bill Maher's playing there, and I'm like, how come I've never done a? Sh- what is going on in there? What yeah, is, right. you know? And then I decided this year I was like, I'm gonna do something there. But uh, the, the one guy I went to high school with, would you say the you know the, the Italianness? Like, yeah, yeah. We called him Gene his whole life. But he was Gennaro. 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 His dad was Gennaro. And then he named his son Gennaro. And then all of a sudden, I guess the Italian thing as Sopranos came on, you know, Italian got like, remember, Italians used to be embarrassed back in the day. It was all the rage. They would would take the vowels off of their names. They would be like, we don't, you know, we're not, (laughs) we're not Italian, you know that. And now all of a sudden, Gene went back to Gennaro in our 40s. I'm like, why are you Gennaro now? (laughs) I, had I can't a, call you that. I had a friend who came from a super Italian family. He went the other way. When that was all in vogue, he dropped his, his, his real name is Rocco. Right. So, you know, uh, and so he, he became his middle name, Nick. So, so Nicholas. So he, he, he went the other way. But yeah, I, you're, you're so right. So many of them just, the original Italian names came back and it was, it was the big thing. It I wonder huge. if they are, because the, the more old school names started coming back, you meet lots of kids named like Jack right. and George. Mm-hmm. But it does, I don't know, because I had, you've had Nick DiPaolo on the show before. Yes, yeah, sure yeah, 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 yeah. Nick used to give me crap all the time. He's like, because <laughs> we were going to go with Julian at one time when right. we were thinking of names for my son. He's like, you can't name 
name him that. <laughs> Julian. He goes, come on. No, no. He goes, you got to go with Rocco Matarese. I still remember. Rocco Matarese. And, and that was my biggest fear, that he'd yeah. end up like just making pizzas. That's what he would do. <laughs> What'd you end up going with? What's his name? Luke, which Luke. is a perfect name. Reginald. Yeah. Not Luca? Yeah. And, and, and that's why we were down here, actually, in this area, why I stayed at my dad's house. We, I'm told, Preston, you were just going through this, looking at colleges. From mm -hmm. He's a junior in high school, so my my wife and my two kids left last night and left me at my parents' house because we were coming back from looking at schools in D.C., New Jersey, and uh, <laughs> talk about my meticulousness. <laughs> that really clicked in because we went to look at American University yeah, in right. D.C., this is what impressed me. And I said to my son, I go, you know, it's a good school. He goes, why? I go, they're putting new mulch down in the winter. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Nobody puts mulch down in the winter. I go, that's going to get snowed on. Why are they putting perfect mulch now? Very observant. I'm like, this place is nice. <laughs> oh, they, oh, the mulch they got. Yeah. Uh, things that a kid, they're not looking at anything when no, you go to these not. colleges. Oh, no, because they live in squalor, right? So they, have, they, they live on these beautiful, pristine grounds, and then you walk into their rooms, and there, I mean, it's because uh, I've I walked in uh, God, a couple of years ago. I went back to my old school and I, I walked into one of the suites and it smelled and looked disgusting. Oh, yeah. And I immediately missed it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. They don't care. Uh, these college, the, 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 I think it was American. They showed us a mock dorm. <laughs> a I'm like, mock dorm? Show me the real dorm. You don't have <laughs> one empty real one. They're like, they just set it up in this other place. Right. right. And they go, this is what it looks like. And then here's something. It was like, you know, when they make a computer generated like a picture drawing? that makes yeah. it look perfect. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's yeah. not what it looks like. <laughs> no. No. Come on, take yeah. me in a, a, a destroyed one. I want to see. Right. Right. Are you are you ready for the, uh, the, the money wise? Uh, like a mortgage every year paying for that? Well, I'm very lucky. Yeah. Because my wife works at Columbia Medical Center in the city in New York. And uh -huh. we get a 50% discount <sighs> on every university. And if we have a kid that's smart enough to go to Columbia, 100%. Wow. Oh, that'd be yeah. phenomenal. Yeah. 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 Do you so currently my, have that? My son has, n sorry to say this, Luke, <laughs> no chance at Columbia whatsoever. <laughs> like, I don't even think they'll let him walk in that vicinity in the neighborhood. Like, yeah. just not, no, just get away. From, like yeah. that scene in Rudy where they go, yeah. you don't belong on right. this bus. <laughs> right, right. You know? That's uh, my daughter's classmate is going to Columbia next year. Is she really? Well, it's, it's a he, so. He is? Yeah, yeah. I think you need a, f I think. What is the person? That's all I look at now is the percentage right. of acceptance. What is the percentage of it? I bet it's three percent. It's yeah. I, I don't it's even like know. seven point five. My son's looking at it as well. Seven point five. Yeah, but you know what's really low is uh, it shocked me. Is Tulane in New Orleans? It's really it, yeah. T Tulane hovers in between three and four percent. But crazy. They're, they're all very difficult to get into. What's your opinion on Columbia? Because it's an interesting part of uh, New York City. I, have you ever been on the campus of I have. Columbia? It's, it's, it's unbelievable. Pretty. Yeah. But yes, it is on. My wife works even further north in the city there. Wow. Because she works at the medical center that's on 167th and Broadway. Have you ever been there? So that's yeah. the campus is more like in the 120s, 130s. As it I feels remember. very removed from the rest of New York. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Well, it's up on that high part where you're looking down off of the cliffs, which yeah. is really cool. Uh, but yeah, it's it's Washington Heights. Uh -huh. I'm not, I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> I mean... My wife That's has right, had her phones. My there. wife has had her phone stolen right off her face. <laughs> wow! <laughs> right off her face. I don't know why that's funny, but it is. <laughs> yes. so it's interesting because my wife works at Temple, and uh, she works at uh, the where the dental school is, and that's like North North Philly. Uh -huh. And she's like, you should see these students walking around in their like fifteen hundred dollar parkas, like they just don't have any clue of like where they're walking. I mean, they're in yes. North Philadelphia. Well, that's another thing your kids aren't thinking because I'm looking. First of all, we looked at University of Delaware and we looked at uni and uh, American University. Now, American University, as an adult, you love it because it's in the richest suburb. <laughs> the how I, I, that's another thing because yeah. the meticulousness. Right. Yeah. I'm texting my brother. I go, "Why does every house have a slate roof, even not nice ones?" <laughs> I go, "That's a two hundred thousand dollar roof on a two hundred thousand dollar house." I don't understand. <laughs> And then and I'm, I'm realizing, you know, because of yeah. the architecture there. Yeah. And, but that, you know, you, you would love your kid to go to a school where they can, like the walking is perfect. You don't have to worry. Yeah. But when,
when you go to a school in New York City or in the center of Philadelphia. It's something to consider. Yeah, it's like yeah. even when I grew up, I remember thinking I wanted to live in Jersey City. And then I ended up living in Hoboken, New Jersey, when I was, right. you know, working on being a New York City comedian. In Jersey City, you walk two blocks, it's bad. Yeah. Whereas you walk in Hoboken, you don't see bad. Yeah. It just doesn't get bad. And it's the same with these schools. It's like, what do you want? Your Hoboken. Don't you want to be able to jog if you felt like exercising? <laughs> mm -hmm. like, you don't want to jog that, go one block over and over again. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Just around the block. <laughs> I just always love the idea of like once you're on campus, like you just stay on campus. Like I, I went to her sinus right down the road and we didn't, like everything we did was on campus. You know, it, it very rarely, like wing it Wednesdays, we would go to the trap or whatever. But, mm -hmm. you know, most of what we did, we just, we just stayed where we were. You it's because you could walk, right? I mm -hmm. was thinking, see, see I, I am not a good guy to ask because I'm wearing the shirt. I went and visited. I dropped out of community college. Can you see that? <laughs> oh, I bought yeah. the shirt Cameron yesterday. County college. I never got sadder in my life <laughs> than yesterday when I visited. the. After looking at those beautiful schools, right, yeah. I go, let's check out. Let's just show you how bad a community <laughs> college looks to give it to my son and his right. brain. And they didn't even like barely got out of the car. Do you know what though? They were like, we're good. To be honest, and I think it's the thing to do instead of blowing wads of cash if if the kid doesn't have a real fix on what they want to do yeah. knock off those those credits at a community college that until does. you can figure out what the hell you want to do I, I tried to say that to him i'm yeah. like listen because he does not he has no clue <laughs> the only thing i said because you know these these colleges come to the high school and i'll yeah. go watch them speak to the whole student body with the parents and you know the number one thing they're saying is you know you got to sound it it's like every Everything in life. Yeah. How are you going to be more interesting when you go to the job interview? What makes you interesting? Who right. are you? Don't need to be. Who are you? And I said, what, what if you had to guess what you want to do? <laughs> right. And he, I said, Not what field? He goes, cars. I go, that's, <laughs> well, at least it's something. Yeah, I, was yeah. amazing. I thought I was going to get nothing. Yeah. Because he doesn't shut up. Right. About the BMW this, BMW that. This car has that, that. And I'm like. Huh. All right, maybe you want to, you know, because I'm a dad, you think, you know, Engineer. I don't want him to be a car salesman, but you, <laughs> let's design cars. Well, BMWs does, they, they have a headquarters, you know what I mean? Like Subaru right across the street, they have a headquarters, uh -huh. you know what I mean? Like, yep. so there, there is something more white collared than, uh, you know, like uh, getting under the hood of a car. Well, you know? I mean, mm -hmm. that's what's great about kids now they have the internet you just put that in and you realize there's schools all over the world but you don't want to just send your kid to design cars when he's not sure mm -hmm. but that's what you know community right. college that is what it's supposed to be used you know, for the yeah. funny thing is figure it, is, it out then go to the next and then get the degree from the four years the perception that you've got to go i mean if you there the, the guy who's under the hood of a car you know working on a bmw is pulling in some solid money yeah. so so there's no, the, no. There's no shame in any, no, they, they, anything. Like, they, they, there's no. There's no mechanics and because so. I was watching a. a uh, I forget what, what I was watching or a news report on this. The the the, the pickings are are slim now for that side of of the the uh, the the job market where they need people who know how to do mm. who do do that stuff the uh, electricians and people who know how to fix the stuff that everyone else wants to rely on other people to fix so the money commensurately goes up the and and now I was talking to an electrician uh, friend of mine who's like I, I can't accommodate all of the the requests for for work it's just it's ridiculous so mm. yeah there's you know there's there's uh, there's avenues. It, there's way, you, you, you have to you, know what you, you want. Do you get my, I mean, my daughter is only eleven. She's super focused on yeah. like being rich at eleven. <laughs> She's already like, what things make you rich? <laughs> what right. things? And I'm like, I'm like trying to list it in my head. I'm like, in inventors, <laughs> invent something. Yeah. I'm like, uh, real estate entrepreneurs. But really, it's it, you can be. A millionaire electrician. Like, yeah. there's no job sure. now yeah. that you can't be really successful at. So, my son is, he's the exact same way. Like, he's like, well, I want to be rich. So, what do I have to do? And I, yeah. the same thing you said, I'm like, you have to invent something. Or he said, it, you, it has to be your own. You can do whatever you want, but as long as it's your own and you're your boss and you run it and you run it so that you can be successful, then you'll have some It's money. so funny. I yeah. never I never had that. I want to be rich. I wanted to be in comedy or, or entertainment or yeah. TV or we movies. Were, we were different. Right, right. So so that was, I wanted to do that. 
But and, and I just assumed my my father always said, if you did do something you love, you're probably going to be better at it. You're probably the money will come. But do what you love. That was always the focus. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I started stand up not because I wanted to make money. That yeah. no, that was not even connected to it. Yeah. It was I like attention. I like performing. <laughs> right. And this is the first job I've ever had where they're not. Wanting to fire me the next day. <laughs> <laughs> I was a horrendous employee, so yeah. you, didn't, you didn't think, you know. That's yeah. the other thing, yeah. where, where learning disabilities come in. Yeah. Because I have learning disabilities, and I realize that my son has certain learning disabilities that my daughter doesn't have, you know, right. from taking the... My wife is a neuropsychologist, so, you know, you put them in this whole battery of testing, which yep. is yeah. super expensive. <laughs> you want to talk about expensive, get <laughs> someone to give a neuropsych exam to your kid. It's about, I think it's $7,500 oh three-day testing, wow. but they really narrow it down to these things... And you almost get depressed hearing it because you're like, my genes just gave him that problem. Uh-huh. I yeah. suck. <laughs> Why does he have that? Yeah. Right. Um, and by the way, uh, I have a learning disability and it's called I'm not smart. Yeah. And uh, unfortunately, that doesn't <laughs> hold water. You know what I mean? Like, I don't have an actual like clinical diagnosis, but I'm like, yeah, I'm just not smart. I'm uh, really unable to like pay attention and retain information. Well, that's what it is. That was the number one the thing that the woman said. And I'm like, how hard is school? If a teacher is giving the lesson and the kid can't receive what he's... But now, yeah. which they didn't have when we were young, I always say, you know, on stage I say this, that what they did with kids with learning disabilities, they put you in the low track class. Yeah. And now they were like, everybody's dumb. So how's this now? Yeah. The teacher's dumb too. Let's bring him in. <laughs> and, you know, right. we got this awful guy teaching you senior year history teaching you state capitals when you're a senior. You know, well, now ridiculous. they have IEPs and things like that. Mm-hmm. So independent, uh, independent education. Uh, um, I forgot what the actual... P? Uh, yeah. Uh, anyhow, well, my kids have had it where they, they can tailor it to your child's disability or yeah. issue. It's, it's fantastic. It's effective, yeah. yeah. Well, they, oh can get, God, yes. they can get textbooks now in audio form. They, they, they didn't have that didn't when have we were growing no. up. No way. So that you got a problem. They're like... Learn your lessons this way, and here's this website that has the notes taken already down. We're kill for you. That. Can you imagine if you had even the slightest amount of dyslexia and you were then treated as being stupid, you mm-hmm. know, 15, 20 years ago? But now, yeah. if you were able to listen to that book, you can actually learn something. Yeah. Well, Casey, you probably, I mean, it's funny that you, you we, we grew up thinking we were stupid That's our right. whole lives. Until I was like in my 40s did I start having people going, you're not stupid, dude. You're like smart. <laughs> and <laughs> I'm you? like, I am? No, yeah. no, I'm dumb. I'm like, I. but then the things that I realized when I'm dumb, it's because it's it didn't come in. It just didn't come. It came in and didn't get received. Mm-hmm. It's like, you know, if you're into, it's like if the microphone was off right now, we were doing the radio show, you know, like <laughs> yeah. with the mics off. Oh, we wow. would be stupid. <laughs> now your mic's on. Oh, stupid, <laughs> man. It's like nothing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh, no, man. I know exactly what you're talking about. Same thing here. I yeah. most definitely high school would have been a completely different story had we had the resources. You, you I, now. Well, you know why my do- my son I think loved University of Delaware the most. Oh Funny. yeah, have you ever been to that campus? I've, I've just been- driven through. I haven't gotten out and walked around, but I've uh, driven by it. Yeah, I think this is probably why we. Lo- <laughs> He loved it. He was there with his friend, too. Two two boys. And uh, it was sorority... Uh, <laughs> oh, was it, was rush? it Rush Week? It, it wasn't Rush Week. It's like what they had to do to like... A, whatever it's called oh, where pledging? you're, appli- you're oh, applying. Pledging. Right, yeah. right. Pledging, yeah. 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 So, so they, they had them like lined up and they're... Uh, well, they don't wear letters yet. But. There was literally 500 college girls all wearing <laughs> yeah. blue dresses <laughs> yeah. and heels. Oh. Walking uh-huh. around and scum- to see the different... Like <laughs> some girl... I, I said... I said to my wife, I go, I don't think I'm checking out the girls. I mean, I am a little bit. Yeah, of course. <laughs> but the funny thing to me is watching girls at this age, they don't know how to walk in heels. It's so funny. <laughs> yeah. and, and it was four degrees outside, yeah, yeah. and they're wearing no th- nothing yeah. on their legs with yeah. short skirts. I'm like, girls are just pretending they're not cold. <laughs> but my son and his friend were like, we really like this school. <laughs> yeah. It's a good school. Uh, I like what they have why. to offer here. Uh, like, uh, I feel I'll be challenged. Best, man. Yeah. He wants to go to Florida. He, he's a typical Northeast boy. He's yeah. like, I want to go to school in Tampa, I think, or yeah. somewhere in Florida. And I'm like, Jeez. you know how fast you will fail out of college if you have a swimming pool yeah. at your dorm? Yeah. I did a commuter college because I was working. I, I was like, I, you know, I, I didn't, I didn't have the, 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 uh, the, the that on campus life. It was, it, it eluded me. I couldn't. So I was, you know, it was mm-hmm. part of the deal. 
So Preston, where's your daughter want to go? <sighs> well, uh, she's going to do um, community college first, first mm -hmm. couple of years. Wants to be a sound engineer. Ah, okay. Like an audio engineer. Well, uh, see, which is awesome because, like you, I'm like, dude, I'll take anything that you have personal drive to do. Uh -huh. Anything that is a legitimate interest. I'm happy about. Because, yeah. see, my son had similar interests, and I'm like, why don't you come in? I do these podcasts. You can be involved in this. Oh. You can do so much. Yeah. You could create yeah. music beds for the commercials, all this stuff. So you get and the they, won't they won't want to do it. Dude, no, I, I bet a I'm daughter like, is more into it. I was, no, because I was I was trying to explain a couple things about mixing and audio and all this, uh -huh. and, and I got a, don't tell me how to do it. I'm like, yes. <laughs> I got 30 some ideas yes. experience. Yes, yes you do. But you are, you, I Preston, know. and you, Joe, are the dad. And that, like, I know. You, you are, like, you need to have the cool, <laughs> the cool uncle could introduce her to audio totally. engineering, you know? Totally. How about, even high schools have courses in that that they can take as electives. Yeah. And I bet there's community colleges that have a higher oh, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. place that you could really learn better. And Montgomery then just, County Community College. Yeah. Uh, uh, yes. David Ivory, his, his program is amazing. Yep. Oh, yeah, and then yep. there's, there's more programs tailored to the kind of stuff like years. I had only one real option to go to college. The, you know, for the communications that I wanted to take it at. Uh -huh. Now it's just constant. I think communications is the, the, the one of the top two um, uh, course uh, uh, majors majors in, in in college and universities these right. days. Yeah, so it's crazy. Wow. All right. Well, listen, brother. We got to wrap, unfortunately, but we're yeah. glad you're back in the area. This is cool. You're going to play the venue you've always driven by. There you go. Driven by. Come on, take man. that, Bill Maher. And uh, it's, <laughs> it's one of the biggest ones. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's the Cats JCC in uh, in Cherry Hill, and it's a fundraiser, too. Uh, there's some money that's going to support the Jewish Foundation of uh, Southern New Jersey's Israeli Emergency Campaign. Uh, so you can go JoeMatterese.com, best place to get tickets. Yeah, that's the easiest way. You know, okay. There's a long other website, but just go there, <laughs> JoeMatterese.com. Right. So Saturday, this Saturday, Saturday every, everybody night. who went to Cherry Hill East or West, you better be there. All right, <laughs> done and done. Make sure you go see Joe. Dude, it's great to see you. You too. Thanks Love for seeing coming you guys. By. Joe Matterese, guys. Hey! Hey! We're going to take a break. I'm over here right back. Stay with us, friends. Speech. And that's your traffic on 93.3 WMMR. All right, thanks, Cass. Steve, you want to hit something? Yes, uh, just a last minute. I appreciate this, Preston. I want to mention that, again, I'm going to be hosting the Love Potions um, event, the happy hour this Saturday. Uh, it is at the Broken Goblet Brewing in Ben Salem. I know you've played there with the, the band uh, a while yeah. back. Preston, it's a great place. Yep. From 6 p.m. to 9.30. Uh, lots of free parking, $10 donation at the door. Funds raised from the event go towards medical care and procedures for ill, injured community cats and owned pets. Very important. And there's all sorts of raffles. Great prizes. It's a great event. Food and everything. Uh, we, I uh, hosted last year. It was a terrific time. And, and it... It gets packed, so make sure you get down there early and take advantage of everything. So that's this Saturday. WMMR.com? Yeah, I believe so, there? yes. And if Excellent. not, it will be by the end of the show. Done and done. Yeah. All right, let's be file it. Now, Bizarre. WMMR presents Bizarre. Kristen and Steve's Bizarre. Bizarre File. All right, I got a handful of things passed along to you. We're going to start with this. A financially troubled former funeral homeowner kept the deceased woman's body in a hearse for two years at a house where police also found the cremated remains of at least 30 people. Oh, yeah. Uh, this is the latest case to underscore lax oversight of Colorado's <laughs> funeral industry. I like how they call it lax. The grisly discovery occurred February 6th during a court-ordered eviction of a house rented by Miles Harford, the 33-year-old owner of Apollo Funeral and Cremation Services in the Denver suburb of Littleton. Uh, Mr. Harford appears to have experienced financial trouble in his business. At times, he was not able to complete cremation to provide remains to family services, according to police. On occasion, I love the smell of formaldehyde. Harford may have provided family members with another person's ashes instead of the wow. ashes of their loved ones. Wow. Uh, temporary urns, plastic boxes the size of a shoebox, were found in the crawl space of the house while a Denver Sheriff's deputy oversaw the removal of Harford's belongings. Some of the boxes were empty. Other urns were found in a moving truck parked outside, and still others were in a hearse, where investigators also found the woman's body covered with blankets. Harford said she died in August of 2022. He was just waiting to get around to it. Yeah, listen, I got backed up, so sue me. Oh, uh, we will. The recovered cremains appeared to be associated with individuals who passed away between 2012 and 2021, he said. So he didn't put like a, a you know, bury before this date. <laughs> 
Authorities have been in contact with Harford and an arrest warrant was issued for him this past Friday. God, there's so many in that industry. You've had so many stories about people doing the exact same thing. It's terrible. 12 new families, and this is a fairly local story, have filed a class action lawsuit against Lehigh Valley Network and the doctor accused of falsely diagnosing families with child abuse. Whoa. Yeah, this is I, I, horrible. Yeah. Uh, the 233-page lawsuit was filed on Tuesday officially. We had heard about this story a while back. Yes. None of the 12 families are named as plaintiffs. Pa- pediatrician Dr. Uh, Deborah Azarino Jensen of uh, LVHN's John Van Brakel Child Advocacy Center is the first defendant listed. Uh, Jensen is accused of systematically overdiagnosing children with a rare condition called Munchausen syndrome by proxy in which a child's caretaker makes up fake symptoms to make the child appear sick. She is also accused of falsely accusing parents of child abuse, which has led to some parents losing custody of their children or serving prison time. So there was one story in particular, I remember, that set this all off. I think that was the initial one you reported on. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah. So the lawsuit lists a total of 17 causes of action against Jensen and other defendants. Uh, The horror stories from families who said they were given misdiagnosis of child abuse. A nurse who spoke about her story last August said her husband, husband, uh, James John, was accused of child abuse until a genetic test revealed her child had brittle bone disease. Uh, She said they badgered me to file divorce in order to keep custody of my children and consistently reminded me that I had a professional license to protect Uh, James was incarcerated in uh, March of 2022 on a laundry list of felony charges. He was promptly released from jail, though. Uh, The very same day, she said, we received received the genetic results about the brittle bone disease. Imagine you're a parent. You're not doing any of this, and yet you're potentially going to lose your job, lose your kid, everything. Horrible. Uh, Manning's family is one of the 12 now suing the NH, yeah, or HM. Well, we'll be passing right by there on the way up to... (laughs) Yeah, on the way to Cardboard Classic. Hey! Hey. Uh, Kansas law enforcement and state wildlife officials have released new information in a state record fishing controversy. Uh, according to Bobby Parkhurst, or he is the one, uh, it was discovered that a new state record fish caught by Bobby Parkhurst was removed in November of 2023. Parkhurst catch of a white crappie weighing 4.07 pounds and measuring 18 inches in length and 14 inches in girth was initially declared a new state record in April last year. Was it? But has been replaced with the previous state record, which was set in 1964. The fish was taken off the state record list due to information on Parkhurst's application not being true and correct. At the time, he claimed that he completed his application correctly. So who did this? However, the department received a tip from an eyewitness who claimed the fish had been initially weighed in at 3.73 pounds. The game wardens met with the angler who voluntarily presented his fish for re-examination, they said. And when staff used a handheld metal detector to scan the fish, they detected the presence of metal. Game wardens took the fish to the Topeka uh, Topeka Zoo. And for further study there, they used an x-ray to examine the supposed trophy catch and found it contained two steel ball bearings in it. Due to the development of... St- I didn't realize this was the way you scan these uh, these contests. Yeah. Well, this isn't even a contest. This it was is just, just for the record. Just for the record, yeah. And you really don't get anything, I don't think, other well, than yeah. bragging rights. So, well, what's the purpose? Due to this development, state wildlife officials removed the fish from the record list. The <laughs> previous state record belonging to Frank Miller of Eureka, Kansas, said in 1964 was reinstated. Uh, and technically, there is a uh, level eight non-person felony that he could face because of this. There's not much to that, but he could face I, the death penalty, a right? Crime, a yeah, death yeah, yeah. penalty. The death penalty is the end result if you are charged. They and rarely use it no. in fish cases. They but... beat you to death with a fish. <laughs> it's very barbaric. All right, let's see. How about this? Uh, Omaha's uh, Henry Dorley Zoo had some distressing news to share on Friday night. Officials say a 36-year-old alligator named Thibodeau needed a a procedure to remove 70 coins from inside his stomach. Was he going for a record as well? Maybe he was. Veterinarians identified the issue during routine health checks on the gators and sent Thibodeau uh, into surgery on Wednesday. Very thick. Uh, the veterinarian, Christina Plug, uh, said with help... <laughs> Plug? <laughs> Plug! Plug! 
Uh, with his, the help of his training, Thibodeau was anesthetized and intubated and allowed us to safely manage him during the procedure. May I guess as to what happened? Sure. People throwing coins? Yeah, into, yeah there you go. That's it. So Plug said a plastic pipe was placed to protect his mouth. Plug? And safely passed the tools used to access the coins, such as camera that helped us guide the retrieval of these objects. Uh, the zoo says that every coin was successfully removed from Thibodeau's stomach and that he's returned to his habitat after recovering well from the operation. Zoo officials stress the importance of guests refraining from throwing any coins or objects into the water, please. They must have been doing more than just that. They must have, like, if, they, if sometimes they sit there with their mouth open, throwing coins, because why would an alligator... I don't know. I mean, you know, like fish will go after shiny things. Yeah. Uh, so a lot of uh, coins, a lot of lures are just uh, right. stuff that uh, that kind of flash in the in the water. So maybe they go after that, dude. And alligators will eat almost anything. Yeah. So who knows? And that is what I have in the bizarre file for you this morning. Secret text word. I right. need a winner, Kathy. What number call is it going to be? Three. All right, call us three, 215-263-WMMR. Let's see if you know the secret text word. We'll come back and find out in a moment. We'll also give some more stuff away. Lesson question, trash, music news. They're on the way. ZZ, top of 93.3 WMMR. Little old man out of text. Tush. It is 10... 20 a.m. on a Wednesday morning with Pressing Steve Show. And one of the Wednesday things we like to do is give some stuff away via our secret text word. So we were looking for magic caller number three. Got him. It's Tom. We're going to go to Tom. Yo, hey, Tom. Good morning, buddy. Good morning. It's Tom, the CPR guy again. Oh, oh my God. God. You're becoming a regular, Tom. All right. Yeah, all I do is teach heroes and drive around listening to Pressing Steve. There you go. <laughs> All right, well, let's see if you can be a winner, brother. What's our uh, secret text word, please? Peonies. Peonies, yeah! yeah. Peonies. Oh, there you go! Peonies. All right, hang on a second, buddy. Peonies. Uh, peonies, is that a plant? It's a flower. flower. It's a flower. All right, so that's cool because we're going to give Tom a four-pack of tickets for the Filling Home and Garden Show, which is February 23rd through the 25th at the Greater Philadelphia Expo Center in Oaks. And join Casey... On Saturday, and cheer him on in the Trading Stations Pickleball Tournament. Yeah. 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. is when that is taking place. Uh, buy tickets early, and you can save at phillyhomeandgarden.com. Use the discount code Casey. Uh, Preston, when we did that Chester County video out at Chad's Ford yeah. Winery, uh, and we were trying to maybe go up in the hot air balloon and all that, a guy came over and was talking to us. I don't know if you remember him, uh, but he actually runs the Peony Festival out in Chad's Ford Whoa. every year. Yeah, and he's he's actually just messaged me. Um, he listens to the show. He wants to send over some flowers. But yeah, I think, and Nick, I think you and Andrea went one year, right? Yeah, there's... Uh there's some really cool peony farms around here and um, send me his contact information because that's her favorite flower. We have some peonies bulbs in the, in the yard because of uh, her affinity for them and guys like that. Nick, I think that place is right next door to a breakfast pizza farm. All right. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, is that near that cash farm? Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm, I did, was not familiar with peonies. I've heard peonies. Of the, peonies of the dog. dog. And yeah, amount, yeah, 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 yeah. The ones yeah, are peonies. The peonies are beautiful, and they don't last very long. So, like, the festival is is very short. It's May 17th to May 31st. Okay. Uh, thank you for all that uh, all that information. That was lots of it. We got hepped. All right, we're going to do today's lesson question, and we are going to give away a pair of Montage Mountain Lift tickets. Woo! For Friday, March 1st at the Cardboard Classic. And that will get you admission for the Collective Concert, Collective Soul Concert that evening as part of Mountain Fest and Montage. So the question that we will ask is this. What song does C-3PO sing in every single Star Wars movie? 215-263-WMMR. Was it every single or three of them? Three of them. Three of them, Three of them, yeah. So which song does C-3PO sing in three Star Wars movies? 215-263-WMMR. Don't look it up because it's not legit. It's what was said on the air earlier this morning. We'll do the trash while you're calling in. The trash business is a gold mine. 93.3 WMMR with Preston and Steve's Hollywood Trash. Brought to you by Live Casino and Hotel Philadelphia. Live Casino uh, presents comedian Marlon Wayans on March 8th. And tickets are on sale at livecasinophilly.com. What's up this morning, Steve? Well, Hot One star Sean Evans and porn star Melissa Stratton 
and split up less than 24 hours after the relationship made headlines, Evans admitted he was having trouble being with someone who has had far more hot things in their mouth. Oh, my God. <laughs> Their fir the first ever patient to be fitted with Neuralink's brain chip can now move a computer mouse through thought alone. However, if the mouse, mouse freezes, it can only be re rebooted by euthanizing the patient. Oh, That's the one downside. <laughs> and finally, Usher doubling down on his Super, half Super Bowl halftime in sexy embrace of Alicia Keys, saying the two are longtime friends. And it was part of a performance. Usher did, however, ever admit that he crossed the line when he finger blasted Jerry Jones. Oh! <laughs> That's a <laughs> All righty, uh, let's see if you know the answer to this. What song does C-3PO sing in at least three Star Wars movies? 215-263-WMMR. We're going to go to Jeremy. Hi there, Jeremy. How are you doing? Awesome, Jeremy. All right, so what song does C-3PO sing in uh, at least three Star Wars movies? Well, in addition to having the last word in every Star Wars, yeah. he sang Smoke on the Water. You got it. Absolutely correct, bud. Hang on the line. We'll get your information, and we will set you up with our prize, which is a pair of Montage Mountain Lift tickets for Friday, March 1st, the day of the Cardboard Cat Classic. And, of course, you're going to get to go to the Collective Soul Concert that evening as part of Mountain Fest and Montage. Celeb registration ends this Sunday. For a list of Cardboard Classic prizes and information on Mountain Fest, you can go to WMMR.com slash Cardboard Classic. And I need to back up for a second here because I didn't mention our random texter. Ooh. Winner of the secret text word is Brendan McArdle, who is from Philadelphia. So it's going to get the uh, tickets for the Philadelphia uh, Home and Garden Show. So congrats. All right, music news. Let's go. Now, Preston and Steve's Music News on 93.3 WMMR. Yeah! couple things to get into here. We'll start with this. On March 5th, Foo Fighters will take a detour from their big stages to perform at a private concert in Washington, D.C. The event is hosted by Power to the Patients, a nonprofit that fights for affordable and accessible health care systems through price transparency. Uh, the band said in a statement, we immediately said yes. People suffering from illness and injury shouldn't have to worry about being bankrupted by surprise charges for their treatment. Uh, Foo Fighters support upfront prices to empower patients uh, to make informed decisions and take control of their health or lower their costs uh, because all consumers have the right to know the actual price of their care before they receive it. True. So a private show from Foo Fighters, which is pretty cool. Actually, I actually have a clip of Dave Grohl uh, because the... Uh, Foreigner is up for the fan vote for uh, rock. I think they're up for the fan vote, or are they just up for a potential? I think they're up for a potential. Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction, and uh, a bunch of artists are uh, pushing for them to be inducted into the Hall of Fame, and Dave is one of them, and here's a little clip of him in the video that they made. I've loved Foreigner since I got their debut record. There's one drum riff that I have used in more than a few songs. That's from Feels Like the First Time. It's definitely a really recognizable uh, little fill that's played. And then Jack Black makes a passionate plea for Foreigner to get in. Feels like the first time. Wano nano. Like you opened up the door. Hey, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, open the door. Foreigner's waiting outside. <laughs> Let him in. Yeah. It's funny how time changes things, man. Because that you know, you're talking about bands that uh, that that get this uh, passionate request now to be inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And, and you know, I've been a, I've been a lifelong Foreigner fan. And um, there was a time though where it became embarrassing to admit that you were a fan of a band like that. I was um, I was okay with Foreigner. I was never huge. And, and now I'm like, yeah, when a song comes on, yeah, I, I mean, dig like, it. When when the music shifted in yeah. the '90s and grunge came around and things went in that direction, all of a sudden, all these bands that I really liked it became very uncool to like yep, them. Yep. Mm. And Foreigner was one of those bands, and so I kind of I kind of hid it away. Same thing with Rush for a while; it's terrible. Uh -huh. But I was working in a modern rock yeah. atmosphere, and, do it. and I really and and my contemporaries kind of had. You know, laughed at music like that, and I just kind of had to take a back seat for a long We're time. We're all gonna laugh at you. I know, I felt that way.
But I'm I'm happy to see bands like this getting their due. Yes, yeah. they certainly deserve it. Absolutely. And uh, so, and especially you know people like Dave Grohl banging the drum. I mean, you know, is it Foreigner or was it a solo effort? I don't want to live without you. You're talking about Lou Graham, live without your love. Uh, that I don't know. It might be, or maybe I'm. He had a wrong. song called Midnight Blue, which he had a big yes, hit with. Yes, it's a good song. Um, and, and the, the video to this song was a whole bunch of uh, animals, mother animal, and you know, fawn and kitten, and that and, and, I don't and, and remember. It was, just, it was a beautiful shot of the world, and it I don't want to like, live without you. I don't. Yes, live without your love. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, no. Uh, I don't think that's Foreigner. Am Hold I, on. No, no, it's, uh, yeah. Am I thinking of Midnight at the Oasis? Nick just pulled it up. It's Chicago. Chicago. Is yeah. that it? Song written by Chicago. Diane Warren. Chicago! Really? Do, do you want to find it? Really? Yeah, please. It. Now, now it won't be in the system. Hey, case. you can pull it up on your, uh. We grabbed Wildfire. We're on, we're on yeah. fire. Well, we did that on my, uh, on my phone. You can pull oh. that up. So, I don't want to live without you. Is that what it's called? Yeah. Uh, from Chicago. Sure. Let's find out if that was it or not. Uh, I'm so, doing an, a spot-on recreation of it, by the way. <laughs> I'm surprised all you aren't leaping up and going, oh, oh we recognize yeah. it instantly. Oh, yes, yes, it's yes. an uncanny representation. <laughs> Your vocal abilities David. are just dazzling. Yeah. Uh, all right, Casey's found it. Hang uh, on. Wait, where did it go? I don't know. Who dat? Who dat? True dat. <laughs> True dat. <laughs> uh, I don't want to live without you. Song, Foreigner. Oh, Foreigner. Then here you go, yeah, Steve. Yeah, this is it. Yeah, this is Foreigner. Yeah. Listen, between the sheets, they, you know, those yeah, compilation no, CDs. Like, yeah. <laughs> between the sheets. <laughs> there's there's I, a I hilarious commercial, yeah. Preston, for an 80s, early 90s, or was, let's say early 90s you know, compilation. You know, you're on some of those Instagram, you know, collections from those commercials that were there on local TV. Mm -hmm. And this one is called Punk. Featuring the music of Chicago. Hey. Like, what? 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 They're so there, punk. The guy's there, but you look at as punk as he can be, and he's like, you know, yeah, I, I, I love Rick Astley. <laughs> By the way, that song did come out in 1987, and um, Foreigner, uh, I loved, but they were not on my popular music radar at no. that time. I think at that point they, they were... On, had you had that. you found fish at that point? Oh no no, 1987. Okay. No, right. I didn't. I didn't wow. hear fish until 1993. Well, there's probably some songs from them you may not know. Somebody just texted in a song I remember called Head Knocker. Uh, there was a Dirty White Boy. D uh, yeah, Star Rider. Yeah, they they had uh, Queef Sniffer. <laughs> You're just a Queef Sniffer, <laughs> sniffing in the night. Come here. <laughs> That's him. This one goes out to Jimmy. Jimmy! Come here. <laughs> 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 Kathy, queen oh, sniffer. Come on, man. Bad. <laughs> she could not be happier with that. Yeah. So funny. <laughs> she wrote that line. A lot of people don't know. She slides, I like it. She slides we, things she over. She writes it yeah. down and slides it over to Steve. Uh, and this, then I plays can't, it off. Because of my reputation. Uh -huh. <laughs> plays it off like yeah. I hate it. Mm -hmm. And all of you. <laughs> But it's just a big act. Wow. Okay. Foreigner wants to get in the Rock Roll Hall of Fame. Okay, so Oscar-winning director Sam Mendes, uh, who directed films like American Beauty and Skyfall 1970, is going to make four different movies about the Beatles, uh, with each told from one of the band's members' point of view. An official statement says that uh, the different films will intersect uh, to tell the astonishing story of the greatest band in history. Paul McCartney and Ringo star in the family's of John Lennon and George Harrison are backing the project, and all the music rights have been granted for, uh, which is a first for a scripted film about the Beatles. Is, so they're getting. Uh, full it's a access. fascinating thing. I think this again. I'm very intrigued. I, I share Nick's concern about what could happen here, but I'm intrigued by what the uh, a positive result would be. So it, it begs the question: outside of documentaries about the Beatles, what? And outside of movies in which the Beatles themselves were in, and there have been a couple of Beatles movies that focus on the Beatles and the music of the Beatles, which is your favorite movie in that cluster? Oh, my God. Uh, you know what I really, really, really enjoyed um, was Eight Days a Week uh, from Ron Howard. So that's a documentary, though. Yeah. 
Oh, so, so you wanted something outside so, of that? Yeah, so... Um, um, oh, like yesterday. yesterday. Yesterday, right? Yesterday was I so much fun. Right? Yesterday has, especially at the end, I don't want to give it away, but it's such a beautiful wrap-up to this... It's, a, it's, a, it's basically, a, it's almost a science fiction of what happens. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's just wonderful. You and it gives, I, you, it gives you a real 30,000-foot um, appreciation of the music. Yeah, I love that movie. I also really liked, I didn't love, but I liked uh, Across the Universe. And the reason why... I is agree! That I think that their take on the mu- on the music in that movie is really good. You get you get Bono's spin on uh, yeah. what a Beatles sound, uh, song would sound like. So I enjoyed that uh, take on it. And then there's the, uh, the rom-com with... Um, um, I want to hold your hand. Oh, right. Is that the name of it? Yeah, is that it? I don't remember. Where they're trying, they're trying. It's it's when the Beatles come to America. They're going to be on Ed Sullivan, oh and my it's God. all of that surrounding that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember that. Right. That came out in probably the eighties. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, I loved that. That was that was a lot of fun. Uh, so yeah, Mendez is going to do this. He said, "I'm honored to be telling the story of the greatest rock band of all time." Excited to challenge the notion of what constitutes a trip to the movies. This one. Aesthetic thing, which I'm concerned about, is that he plans to include Skeletor in each of the movies, oh, mm. and that to me seems rather <laughs> <laughs> like as a villain or just as, to show uh, up. No, to replace Nick, to replace uh, Brian Epstein. Oh, yeah, I yeah. Mean, that's kind of reaching. ACDC will celebrate their 50th with the release of an exclusive gold-colored vinyl collection of their music. Uh, The band's first nine albums individually and as a bundle will be available March 15th exclusively at Walmart. Additional albums will be reissued at a later date. Mm. And in May, ACDC kicks off European tour in support of their latest album, Power Up. And then finally, uh, I watched this this morning. Billy Joel released an incredible video for the new single, Turn the Lights Back On. Um, and it's interesting. It's uh, they've, They're using um, AI technology, I assume. But it's pretty amazing. Yeah, you see him sitting at the piano, singing the song, and then suddenly he's the younger version of himself. And he ate, oh, excuse me, ages through the video. I saw, well, I saw the intro to the video. I was like, I've seen this before. I don't need to watch it again. Uh, and no. it's because it was the old video. Yeah. That was me being an idiot. At some point, he, he they they go away, they show the lights, and then they oh. pan back down, and he's, you know, he's back in the 1970s building. And then Joel. they go forward. Singing the song. Right. Yes. His skin starts to peel off. <laughs> Like and, a yeah. Raiders? Yeah. And or no, like Last Crusade? Right, and a skeleton is there. and the I, are... I get a little bit of uh, Uncanny Valley from it. There's just a touch. Just a tiny bit. They're getting better and better. I'm still pretty good. The new AI uh, generating engine came out, uh, where they released some of the results over the weekend. This one is, we're going to have to have a whole uh, industry involved with people who are professionals at detecting yeah, what's real this and what's fake not. stuff because it's, it, it is getting it's getting dangerous. Uh, scary. Yeah. I was having a conversation with my friend over the week, and it's, um, yeah, it's pretty terrifying. You need, so, you, all you need is in the, in the height of some sort of crisis yeah. or a video to pop yep. up of someone making a decree yep. who hasn't made it to send people into Whatever. riotous conditions. Yeah, yeah yep. well, my friend Ben Richards, he was uh, accused of <laughs> Dude. firing okay. on... Un- Armed citizens. Well, he was he was ordered to. Yeah, and he refused said no. to do it. He said to hell with that. To hell believe. with you. You guys were friends. Yeah, I didn't know. That. Yeah, I. You know that guy <laughs> was a hero. Right. And it took for he. Had, they reduced him to a goddamn game show. Yeah. yeah. Come on. Yeah. Before Not you cool. learned how good he was and, and really what he had done. Mm-hmm. Y'all remember? Uh, by the way, it's been decades since uh, Billy Joel shot a music video. I'll tell you something though. Couldn't have done it without Maria Cachita Alonso. Oh, oh no, right. she was wonderful yep. in that. Uh, throughout his uh, career, Billy Joel has sold uh, over 160 million albums and is the fourth best-selling solo artist in the United States. And don't discount Mick Fleetwood either. Mick Fleetwood mm-hmm. was essential, yes. as was uh, Dweezil Zappa. Yep, they, he wouldn't have lived. Ben Richards wouldn't have lived without their help. All right, uh, and that is all I have in music news for you. We're going to take a break, and we'll come back, and we will wrap up the program. Letter today, word of the week. We'll let you know. It's only three letters this week, right? Three. That's it. it. We'll be right back. Black Keys bring us to our musical end for this Wednesday morning on 93.3 WMMR. Beautiful people. Stay high.
1047, and we are looking at a day that's going to be pretty gray, like you're seeing right now. High of about 44 degrees, 48 tomorrow, clouds, maybe some rain on Friday, and then cold on Saturday. High Very 37, cold. yeah. Right, with the wind chill? Yep, and then we start uh, warming up a little bit after that. Next week's going to be... Getting up into the upper 50s, maybe hey. 60s, who knows? Bring your uh, bathing suits to Montage. Yeah. yeah. Come on out. No, they're all good to go. Oh, they've, they've made lots of oh, snow. So yeah, they're we'll, solid. We'll be ready for it. Yeah, up there's going to be a little bit cool. I was looking at the uh, the forecast for, I mean, it's it's a seven, eight day. Actually, it was a 10-day forecast, but still. Um, it's going to be like a high uh, in the 40s it's, and it's low perfect. in the 30s. That's great. Perfect. Right. That's great. And yeah. for skiing, people love that, right? Most definitely. All right, I would like to thank, we had a series of people on the show this morning. We had a nice uh, visit from Todd Glass. Todd Glass. Hey. Todd is performing. He's doing 13 shows. Uh, and Bourbon and Branch. It starts tonight, 7 o'clock. Um, so it's a smaller venue. It's only like 70 people. To give you an idea, like where you normally play so Helium's, like he was saying, 275 or so. Right, right. Uh, so it's a much smaller, more intimate setting. And that's what he wanted. He wanted to do more shows in a smaller venue and uh, he's really excited about that. I get well he is working on some things and this actually suits his purpose right now and there's a long term method to the madness and I think it's a perfect way to see Todd Glass. Yep. Uh, then thank you to actor Alan Tudyk. Yeah! He's great, man. And uh, he was on promoting Resident Alien. You can see that Wednesdays, 10 p.m. on Sci-Fi. Great. Streams on Paramount, and the first two seasons are on Netflix. I think there's like eight episodes per season, so it's not a lot. Yeah, and then our buddy Joe Matarese was on the program as well. So uh, Joe is going to be playing a special show at Katz's JCC in Cherry Hills, a place he's always wanted to go to. It's a really large venue, and uh, yeah. he's excited about like, it. So. Yeah. And his dad came in here yeah. with us this morning. That was really cool. We <laughs> yeah, had a nice, a nice guy. chat on and off the air. 81 uh, years old, you would not know it. No, not at all. It was really cool. Uh, Pierre Robert is here wearing his tie-dye this morning. Peace and love, Thank buddy. You. Thank you. Was uh, Todd here live? Yes. yes. Yeah. Oh, wow. I missed that. I'm sorry to say. That's all. Uh, it's always colorful to see what he's going to plug and hawk and how much free <laughs> business he can get. And Joe's lawn service. Will you come over and do my mother's lawn? <laughs> oh, and she needs a new couch. Is there any upholstery places out there? Yeah. Well, that was, she's I, passed. He, you know. Oh, she did. I'm she, sorry. Yeah, no, okay. no. But we were joking about it. And he jokes about it. I said, "Can you still milk? Get the free stuff? You know?" Uh -huh. And and he and so he started doing his his thing. In fact, he. Uh, He's joked about it and and uh, said, oh, by the way, she's still dead, you know, and, but still does his regular tar glass things that you love. I love him. He's great. Yeah, yeah agreed. Uh, shall we do the letter yes. of the day, dude? All right, here we go. Preston and Steve on 93.3 WMMR. Now, the Daily Letter. And the Preston and Steve show is brought to you today by the letter. H as in Harry. All right, H as in Harry. And we are going to give away a pair of lower level tickets to see the Flyers play the Lightning uh, Tuesday the 27th at the Wells Fargo Center. So get your tickets at philadelphiaflyers.com or win them from us. we got two more letters and then that is it. Uh, what's happening on this Wednesday morning? Well, we have Green Day blocks, uh, blocks of Jimi Hendrix and the Killers and uh, tickets to the Tony Award winning new musical Girl from the North Country, which will be happening uh, February 27th at the Forest Theater. So it'll be cool. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you, Pierre. And I want to thank our sponsor, President Steve Show, brought to you today by Duncan. And the Preston and Steve show, of course, runs on Duncan. A couple more guests tomorrow. Uh, John Heffron. Oh, we love John Heffron. Yeah, we'll be checking in with him. And uh, Brian Pussain. Hey. We love Brian Pussain. He'll be on, it's too. Like an embarrassment of riches. Yeah, we're going to enjoy it. That is it. We are done. Rage on. Have yourself a wonderful day. And we'll do it again tomorrow. See you guys. Bye-bye. Hey.